Okay, so again, yeah, and so we will be having a review of the nursing process. This is the first part of the nursing process. No, since medyo may time constraint tayo, I will not be checking for any attend uh, for any participation during this classroom discussion. Now I will just go ahead with the discussion, and then later on, if you have any question, you can actually uh, call my attention. You can raise your hand at any time. No, you can call my attention, raise your hand, or uh, so that I can uh, I can actually acknowledge you. Okay, there is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so first, of course, uh, we know that the nursing process is very important, diba? Right? And now, uh, your subject is uh, health assessment, and this uh, health assessment will actually be very crucial, enable for you to carry out or to uh, properly no, make your nursing care plans, okay? So review of the nursing process muna tayo. Review of the nursing process. So guys, what is the nursing process? No? So makikita nyo sa module nyo that the nursing process, this is a dynamic, di ba? It's a dynamic and systematic. Tama ba? It's dynamic and systematic. Meron ba nakikinig pa sa akin? Nandiyan pa ba kayo? Nakukuha niyo ba? Yes, sir. Ayan. So it's a dynamic, systematic, and rational method. no? Dynamic, systematic, and... Ano ba? Ano nangyari sa aking pen? Ba't gumagana? Naghang. Naghang. Dali lang, ha? Paliktad pala. Dynamic, systematic, and rational, no? So this is a dynamic, systematic, and rational method of, guys, this is important, providing no providing sorry planning and providing systematic planning and providing ay yeah, ang gulo okay here planning and providing individualized nursing care okay individualized nursing care so that is the that is the purpose of your uh, um, nursing process okay so you have to actually plan and provide individualized nursing care so it is dynamic it is systematic and rational in nature okay now later on we will see or we will know back it's a dynamic back it's a rational okay may nag chat ah okay sige Okay, bakit siya dynamic and bakit siya uh, rational? Uh, bakit siya dynamic, systematic, and rational later on? So the nursing process, okay, the nursing process actually involves five phases, okay? The first one is the assessment phase or the assessing phase. Tumatama yung ano ko sa pen. Okay. The first one is the assessing phase. The second one is the diagnosing phase. The third one is the planning phase. The fourth one is the implementation phase. And the fifth one is your evaluation phase. Tama ba? Naalala? Can you still remember this, guys? Natatandaan pa? So these are the phases of your nursing process. Now, if you will look, your assessment is also is also a systematic, no? Systematic. Your assessment phase is also a systematic, no? It's a systematic and continuous. So, systematic and continuous siya. Anong ibig sabihin nun? So, 
in all parts or in all phases of the nursing process, you will have to do assessment. Okay, so your, your assessment, it's actually systematic and continuous. Anong ginagawa mo? Systematic and continuous collection of data. Collection of data, organization of data. Validation, okay, you have validation. And documentation okay and documentation so this is what you do in your assessment phase so again when you do assessment or in the assessing phase that is a systematic and continuous process of collection of data organization validation and documentation so yan ang ginagawa natin when we do assessment now when we talk of assessment there are also things that we need to consider in assessment. So later on, I will be discussing that step by step or one by one. No? So in general, muna tayo. Now, the diagnosing phase, okay? The diagnosing phase, this one uses critical thinking skills. Critical thinking skills and critical thinking skills and clinical reasoning and clinical reasoning, okay? So you use critical thinking skills and clinical reasoning in able to, okay? In able to interpret, no? In able to interpret your assessment data. So kaya kung makikita nyo dito guys, whatever is the result of your assessment will affect all the phases of the nursing process. That's why when you actually talk of the nursing process, it is very important that during the assessment phase, you will be able to do it, okay, accurately and factually, no? It is very, to, uh, very important that when you do the assessment, it should be accurate and it should be factual, back it, because your assessment will affect the diagnosing phase, no? Kasi anong ginagawa sa diagnosing phase? In diagnosing phase, we interpret no, the data that we get from the assessment. What data are we talking about? We are talking about the subjective and the objective data, okay? Now, after your diagnosing, you will go to the planning phase. So what, what is now involved in the planning phase? In your planning phase, guys, okay, this is a deliberate and systematic process that involves decision making and problem solving. So here, you will be doing decision making and problem solving, okay? So here, you will be doing decision making and problem solving. So this is under your planning phase. Okay. And then we go to your implementation. Implementation uh, phase simply is putting into action. Now here, you put into action whatever plan, whatever plan that you made during the planning phase so that you can deliver the uh, you can you can render care to your patient and of course the evaluation phase no now the evaluation phase this is a planned ongoing activity so it's a planned ongoing activity in which the client's healthcare professional determine the client's progress so here you will determine the client's progress, okay? So again, in general, this is your nursing process. So when we talk of the nursing process, we will talk of the assessment, diag assessing, diagnosing, planning, implementing, and evaluating phases. These are the five phases of your nursing process, okay? So for those who came late, please enter your set because especially for set four, so that I can actually check your attendance later on, okay? So far, do you have any question with this? May tanong ba kayo dito? May tanong? Guys, do you have any question? None po, sir. None. So None po, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, your nursing process, okay, when you talk of your nursing process, 
it is also important to understand that we will be using critical thinking, critical thinking skills and clinical reasoning. No? Critical thinking skills and clinical reasoning. These are two important parts that you must have or you must actually acquire in able for you to deliver your nursing process appropriately, okay? So what is critical thinking? Critical thinking, this is a process, no? This is a process. So lahat yan, it's a process. It's a process of higher intentional thinking. Higher intentional thinking, okay? Higher intentional level of thinking, kulang. Higher intentional level of thinking. When you say higher intentional level of thinking, guys, this is not just the normal thinking that we can use or apply in our everyday living. For example, you are asked, asked to wash clothes, then you know what is the, what are the things that you, you can do when washing clothes, diba? Right? But here, it's higher intentional level of thinking because we are talking of the nursing process. Now, if we are talking of the nursing process, you will have to apply here the knowledge, the skills, and the attitude that you learned from the profession, no? That you learned from the profession, okay? So this is critical thinking, okay? So this critical thinking, okay, it will be uh, helpful for us in defining a client's problem, okay? It will be useful in defining a client's problem, no? and making choices and making choices in the delivery of care in the delivery of care okay so this is your critical thinking now what is clinical reasoning so on the other hand this is a cognitive process okay so i'm sure na pag-aralan niyo naman to nasem okay it uses thinking strategies no Thinking strategies to gather and analyze information. Thinking strategies which will help you to gather and analyze information. Yeah. So this is clinical reasoning. Okay. Now, what are the things involved when we talk of critical thinking? So there are different uh, aspects or different things that you have to have when you are talking about critical thinking, so yung mga fair-mindedness, independence, no? Yung mga yan, very important. It was discussed on your previous, on your previous in, uh, in the previous semester. Now, if this is your nursing process, no? Assessing, diagnosing, planning, implementing and evaluation evaluating okay your critical thinking skills and your clinical reasoning and your clinical reasoning is in the center so it's in the center so it will radiate in all phases of the nursing process that is why in able for you to properly deliver the nursing process, you must develop critical thinking and clinical reasoning. Okay, do you, do you still remember the the things that uh the the characteristics okay that uh defines or that can help you deliver critical thinking skills? Natandaan niyo pa ba yun class? Natandaan pa? Hindi na. Hindi na? Hindi na? May kausap pa ba ako? Hindi na po, sir. Hindi na? Okay, sige. Balikan lang natin sandali. Ah. This one will be a very, very short one. Okay, yeah. Sige. New share. Microsoft. Okay, here. Yeah. So when we talk of critical thinking, guys, there are attitudes that foster critical thinking. The first one is independence. Okay. The first one is independence. Anong ibig sabihin yan? 
okay? When you say independence, you should have the ability to decide for yourself. No, you should have the ability to decide for yourself, okay? That one is what you call independence, okay? But ayaw mag-draw. And that one is what you call independence, no? Halimbawa, okay, why do you have to have independence? As a nurse, our function is not just to follow doctor's order, no? Our function is not just to follow doctor's order, okay? We have our very own profession, so we have to deliver our own responsibilities according and defined by the profession. Okay? Yan yung kailangan natin i-deliver. So we have independence. Now, if you don't have independence, it will be difficult for you to make critical thinking. If it's difficult for you to make critical thinking, then it will be difficult for you also to carry out and deliver your nursing care plan. Bakit? Kasi diba sabi nga natin, when you carry out your nursing care plan, you have critical. You need to have critical thinking and clinical reasoning. So, ano ba yung form of independence? Okay, simple. Can you do decision making? Because that is an integral part. You should know how to make decisions. Because when you become professional nurses, you cannot just base everything from the people around you. So, you have to make your own decisions also. Okay? So, that is very important. Again, nakukuha siya. So this is one characteristic, okay? Independence. Now, the next one is fair-mindedness. So what is fair-mindedness? So when you say fair-mindedness, you should be able, okay? You should be able to see both sides of the scenario. Okay? So you should be able to see both sides of the scenario. We are not only talking about your own opinion. For example, when you have fair-mindedness, you should be willing to listen to other people or so. Okay? So you will determine the pros and the cons depending on the information that you gathered based on both sides. Okay? So that one will give you fair-mindedness. Okay? Not being judgmental. Insight to egocentricity, intellectual hum humility, this one goes hand in hand, okay? So what is intell intellectual humility? Guys, it is very important that you need to accept that you do not know everything, okay? So bawal dito yung maging know it all, Sino yung mga know-it-all? Yung mga smart alec na tinatawag natin, no? So you cannot be know-it-all, okay? Because you should uh, always remember that there should be intellectual humility. Ano ba yung mga know-it-all? Okay, I will give you an example, guys. Okay? So recently, I have joined the... Kaya sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, I have joined the CVMC family, di ba? Nag-join ako sa CVMC family as a nurse. So... Since ang work ko is on a teaching side, I'm a clinical instructor, so I can say that I have enough, no? So I, I will not say very good. I have enough knowledge when it comes to theory. Theoretical, diba? But when I went in to the rotation, na clinical rotation, you will see that everything is done differently okay what you see in the books what you see in the books is not exactly what is delivered okay hindi yan exactly yung makikita mong practice okay so here you should be able to realize that you need to accept that not everything you know, okay, you do not know everything so you have to have intellectual humility so you have to Open your mind and accept, no? Accept and process information that will be given to you, new information, okay? So in that way, you will continuously gain knowledge, okay? You will continuously gain knowledge 
enable for you to deliver your tasks effectively. Okay? So always remember that you should have intellectual humility. Napaka-importante ng intellectual humility. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, kunin to eh. Hindi nagmo-move ang aking cursor. Dali lang guys ha. Ayan, may mga pumapasok kasi nawawala pumapasok. Okay, naiintindihan so far? Naiintindihan so far? Yes, sir. Okay. The next one is intellectual courage to challenge the status quo. Okay, guys, this is very important. Ha? Intellectual courage to challenge the status quo. Okay, again, I told you earlier, our goal, okay, uh, we as a nurse, okay, we belong to a certain profession. So we just do not follow doctor's orders, okay? We do not just simply follow blindly, okay? As nurses, since we carry out doctor's order, it is very important that we are knowledgeable. Okay? That we are knowledgeable. Bakit? For example, your doctor order a medication. So who will carry out the medication? Is it the doctor or is it the nurse? Who will carry out the medication? Is it the doctor or is it the nurse? Nurse po. The nurse will carry out the medication. Now, you will give medication, but then when you see the doctor's order, you realize, no? You realize that the medication that was ordered is contraindicated, contraindicated for the patient, meaning you cannot give that to the patient because patient has allergy, for example, to that medication. Okay? What will you do? Will you still give the medication because, because the doctor ordered it? Or will you uh, check with the doctor professionally, okay, or in a nice way, the order? Which one will you do? Will you carry out? Or will you check? One or two. Check with the doctor. Anyone? What will you do? Check box. You will check. Okay, good. You actually have to check, no? You have to check with the doctor, okay? The order. Hindi pwede na, dahil in order na ni doctor yan, ay sigurado tama yan, no? It does not follow that way also because sometimes our doctor tends to forget. So that is why, no? Nurses should also be able, should have the intellectual courage to challenge the is status quo, okay, or the ritual. So usually, we follow the doctor's order. That is usual. As long as there is nothing wrong with the, with the doctor's order, we follow, we carry out, we deliver. But if you think that the doctor's order, uh, there is something wrong with the order, or is it contraindicated with the, with, uh, with the patient, then you have to actually voice out. You have to clarify, okay? And it takes a lot of courage, no? Totoo yan. It will take a lot of courage. So by right, you should have this, okay? You should have this characteristic, okay? Kasi kung hindi, alam mo na, as a nurse, you know na si patient ay meron siyang allergy to that medication. E si doktor nagbigay ng order. Ikaw naman si nurse, deliver. Carry out. Sinong may mali? Si doktor or si nurse? Si doktor lang ba ang may mali? Ha? Pareho silang may mali. So they are both responsible. Okay? Kaya nga guys, dito sa, sa lecture nyo na health assessment, it is very important, no? that you learn that you learn the basic no that you learn the basic things that you will need to assess properly okay then of course yeah integrity this is another question you should have integrity bakit guys no kaya alam nyo eto talaga alam niyo ng mga naging students ko since last time no your integrity will actually tells a lot about you Okay, your integrity will actually tell a lot about you. Okay, so for example, that's why I'm as early as now, 
you should be able to build integrity. No, yung aking mga students, I'm sure for last ano, they know. No? Every time they make NCP or they make an activity, I always ask them, okay, where did you get your where did you get your information? The information. Bakit? Where did you get the information? Bakit? Kasi, dun sa mga information na yan, majority of the information that was provided is actually makikita mo siya sa online. You will actually see it online. So, ano nangyari? Sometimes what they do is they tend to copy-paste. Okay? So, when they tend to copy-paste, ano nangyari? Nag-copy-paste sila, nagawa ba nila, na-deliver ba nila with integrity yung responsibility nila? Hindi. So, in that way, Zero sila, di ba? Kasi you have to develop integrity. Imagine, if you don't have integrity, how will the people around trust you? Okay? So that is why integrity is very important. And then perseverance, confidence, and curiosity. Okay, now guys, eto lang, mag-focus ako sa confidence. Confidence is very important. But how will you get confidence? You can get confidence by building up your knowledge. Why? Because knowledge, this is the key to confidence, okay? Knowledge is the key to confidence. When you are knowledgeable, okay, when you are knowledgeable, then you, yeah, you can be confident or you are confident in doing things because you know that what you're doing is actually rational or you know the reason behind what you did. So no one can question you because you know you are aware of the consequences of what you do because you are knowledgeable. So when you are confident, when you are not sorry, when you are knowledgeable, then you are confident. But can you be confident without knowledge? Can you be confident without knowledge? No. No. So halimbawa, di ba? Pinadala namin kayo sa inyong uh, rotation, sa community rotation. Wala nang turo-turo ng health teaching, hindi na ng health assessment kasi ano naman, online naman tayo. Let's not teach health assessment anymore. Okay? Or mag-health assessment tayo pero wag na nating pasukan ng health assessment. Kaya na ng mga bata yan kasi may module yan. Okay? So binasa nyo sa module, hindi nagturo si teacher. But the problem is, pagdating nyo sa community, no, when you assess the individual, the family, a group, or community, hindi nyo alam ang gagawin nyo. Do you think you will have the, comp the, 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 the confidence to step out of the community, to go into house-to-house -house interview, to assess the patient in the interview kung hindi nyo alam ang gagawin nyo? Tingin nyo, magiging beneficial yun for you? No, diba? no, Hindi. That's why you have to actually build your knowledge. Your health assessment, okay, it's very important with the remaining uh, steps of your life as a student nurses. Okay? So very, very important yan. Okay? So ibabalik ko lang siya dun sa aking whiteboard kanina. Ayan. Okay. So naiintindihan. So your, your, your critical thinking and your clinical reasoning these are integral. Okay, when you say integral, this is very important in the in accomplishing and delivering your nursing process. Naiintindihan ba siya? Naiintindihan? Yes, sir. Okay. So what are the steps that we do? When we assess, we actually kagaya sa nabigo kanina, we collect, we organize, we validate and we document. Diba? We collect, we organize, we validate, and we document. This is the first thing that uh, we do, or these are the things that we do when we do assessment. Okay. Now, in diagnosing, what we do is we analyze data. We identify health problems. So your health problems, it can be actual, potential. Okay, so it can be an actual or potential health problems. And we 
formulate we formulate diagnostic statements okay we formulate diagnostic statements so this is what we do when we talk of the diagnosing phase okay that is what we do when we do when we talk of diagnosing phase now what about the planning phase in the planning phase okay in the planning phase here we actually prioritize the problem we prioritize the problem we formulate your goals and desired outcome we select nursing intervention and we write the nursing intervention select and write nursing intervention okay in implementation this one we reassess and then we carry out there are other steps that is needed i will just discuss later and then here evaluate we again collect data okay collect data analyze data compare data later on i will discuss that so these are the things that we do when we talk of the nursing process okay so let's go to assessment tandaan pa natin kung sino pang nakakaalala ng assessment okay so since this is a review i will not go to to all the details specifically ha so kagaya ng sinabi natin kanina assessment this is a systematic dynamic and continuous okay guys systematic dynamic and continuous okay so remember there is a system that we follow it's dynamic because it's not fixed okay you, you can adjust it at any point in time and it's continuous we assess from the start that we receive the patient until the time that we discharge the patient okay so it's systematic dynamic and continuous okay continuous what it's a continuous way of again collecting organizing validating and documenting data okay so again your assessment is a systematic, dynamic, continuous collecting, organizing, validating, and documenting data. Okay, so this will include your psycho physiological, psychological, sociocultural, spiritual, economic, and lifestyle factors as well. Okay, so there are four different types of assessment. Four types of assessment. So what are the different types of assessment that we have? Okay, the first one is initial assessment. So, ano ang initial assessment, guys? Initial assessment, this is performed, okay, within a specified time after admission to a healthcare facility, okay? So, initial assessment is performed after a specified time within contact or admission to the healthcare facility. Now, what is the fact? What is the purpose of your initial assessment? This is to establish baseline data. Okay, to establish baseline data or database, complete database of your patient. So when you establish baseline data or a complete database of your patient, what happened? You actually, it will actually lead to it will actually lead to problem identification. Problem identification, okay? So what are the actual, what are the actual possible problems of your client, okay? So that is the initial assessment, usually done upon admission, okay? So sino na sa inyo nakapunta sa emergency hospital, sa emergency room? Di ba, pag napunta kayo sa emergency room, anong gagawin ng nurse? May lalapit sa inyong nurse, may bibigay na papel, paki-fill up po ito. Di ba? So that is the initial assessment. Kasama na yun. No? Kasama na yung pinafill up sa inyo. Plus, of course, they will do inspection, palpation, percussion, and as, as, uh, auscultation. It depends. No? 
it depends on the policy of the hospital or the, the agency. Okay, so this is done upon admission. Okay, now what is the second type of assessment? Okay, what is the second type of assessment? The second type of assessment, this is your problem focus, okay? This is your problem focus assessment. So what do you do when you have a problem focus assessment, guys? So problem focus assessment, this is a ongoing, no? This is a ongoing assessment. So meaning, okay, Meaning, after the initial assessment, if the client, for example, is admitted and there will be a continuous care that will be provided to your client, then you will have a problem focus assessment. Bakit siya naging problem focus? What you did in the initial assessment, you get data, subjective and objective data that can help you identify the actual and the potential problem of your clients. Tama ba? Am I correct? Is it correct? Is it correct? Okay, now, when you, when you already have the subjective and objective data during the initial assessment, then you will be able to identify actual and health problems. So when you identify actual and health problems, okay, then you can now proceed to your problem focus assessment. Why? Remember, your initial assessment is only done at specific, a specific period of time. So upon uh, getting the data, upon... Um, deriving or defining what the actual and potential problem of your client is, you can now go to your problem focus assessment, okay? So here in the problem focus assessment, it's ongoing, why? Because you are determining the status of a specific problem identified in an earlier assessment. You are determining, okay? You are determining a status of a specific health concern or health problem that has been identified in the initial assessment. So dito, yung focus mo na is about the problem na na-identify during the initial assessment. Okay? Nakukuha siya? Problem identified during the initial assessment. Nakukuha? Nakukuha? Malinaw? Guys, I'm so clear. Okay, then the third type is your emergency assessment. Okay, what is your emergency assessment? Okay, emergency assessment is done. Okay, it is done during any, okay, during any psychological and physiological crisis. Okay, the key here is physiological and psychological crisis okay physiological and psychological crisis okay guys remember uh, were you uh, uh, were you all able to do the activity the module 1 activity the 21 year old female yes. you want to get an update about this lady this is an actual patient that I have, okay? But then I, uh, for, for privacy, I just uh, took this, the, the case because I think that would actually help you understand some of the situations or the actual uh, problems that is in, uh, encountered, no? So as of uh, Saturday, she passed on already. No? So ano na siya, uh, RIP na si mommy. Pero si baby naman naka -uwi, no? But rem see... This mother, this mother is a 21-year-old mother who delivered via cesarean. No, ito yung actual scenario niya. She is 21 years old, admitted with COVID. She is pregnant. She actually delivered via cesarean. The baby was negative, but the mother was positive. Okay? So they were transferred to our ward. No, na transfer siya sa ward namin with the baby. Nakaroom in si baby. Meaning kasama ni mami si baby sa room. Kasi hindi mo naman pwedeng ilagay kasi nasa isolation ward kami, nasa COVID isolation ward kami. Okay? So, the second day, naka-ano na si mami, naka-high flow, meaning uh, she is uh, supported by mechanical ventilator. no 
delivering around 80 liters per, uh, sorry, 80% with uh, 40 liters per minute of oxygen. So, yan, yeah, later on siguro ma maintindihan nyo yan later on more. No? But then, naka-high flow. Ibig lang sabihin nun that she, that, the, that we are administering higher level of oxygen. No? Kasi nga, may COVID siya. Nahihirapan na yung respiration niya. Plus, kakagaling pa lang yan ng surgery. No? So, na-observe ko kay client, first day, okay lang. Nakita ko kasi medyo lagi siyang tulog. Hindi siya hindi siya masyadong awake. So, hindi niya napapansin yung baby niya. Second day, napansin ko, kahit umiiyak yung, yung baby niya, hindi niya pinapansin. Ganon din nung third day. So, I, I am guessing that this patient, okay, I am thinking that this patient might be developing postpartum depression, okay, or postpartum crisis, which I actually voice out sa nurse manager namin, no? And then, ganon din pala yung napapansin ng nurse manager namin. So the next day, the patient was actually referred to, referred to the to mental health, okay, to to a mental health doctor, yeah, to a mental health doctor. So knowing that the patient is uh, might be undergoing postpartum depression, no. So from that day on, what I did is I always uh, take around, no. I always walk around. Doon sa ward. Given though that it's an isolation ward, meaning lahat ng pasyente namin COVID, no, you can actually walk naman doon sa aisle para makita mo yung patient mo. So I was checking uh, the rounds no, when I saw that the mother sat up sa bed, umupo siya sa bed. Di ba? Umupo siya sa bed and then, okay, and then what she did is she tried to kick the bassinet. No, she tried to kick the bassinet. The good thing is that we were able to place the baby a little farther from the mother. No, so immediately we actually have uh, called someone who is uh, done, meaning nakasuot ng personal protective equipment. We asked to go inside the room, and then we asked uh, the baby to be placed uh, aside. No, uh, meaning farther from the mother, and then la do na lalo nagbigay na tayo ng mga medications. Ganyan. So there was an emergency assessment done uh, after it was actually raised or shared with the ano with the proper authorities or referred no so there you will see that you have to do an emergency psychological assessment no kasi uh, it's not uh kumbaga hindi siya hindi siya ganun given though that we are actually thinking na pwede siya nagde-develop siya ng postpartum depression no nagde-develop siya ng postpartum depression but when it actually happens na sinisira na sinisipa niya na yung baby niya na nasa base niya, then that actually is a different thing. So you will have to actually assess immediately, okay? To the point that si mother was, has been placed also in, ano, in a restraint. No? Na restraint siya kasi aside from that, after that, ang ginagawa niya, inaalis naman niya yung kanyang mech vent. So, ayun. So she was put on restraint. There is a uh, emergency, meaning there are things that has, has to be done immediately in able to address the patient concern Okay, and able to provide safety both of the mother and the baby. So that is uh, emergency assessment. Okay, it's done during a psychological or physiological crisis. Okay, and then the last one, the last one is a time lapse. The last one is a time lapse assessment. So what is a time lapse assessment? Time lapse assessment. This is actually uh, done. It's it's, it's uh, somehow somewhat related to the follow up. Okay follow up okay it is done several months after the initial assessment okay here you compare the client's current status to baseline data so you compare the client's status to the baseline data of the client okay so that is what you do okay may i know sino po si iphone there is one uh, who joined that is uh, nakalagay lang iphone can you change your name to your full name at saka sino po si user Sino po si user and si iPhone? Otherwise, I will remove you from the room, guys, if you don't have your full names. Hello? Hello? Narinig ba ako? Okay, uh, iPhone, I will put you in the waiting room first. And also si user, ilalagay ko sa waiting room until you actually... Uh, change your name properly, huh? then I will uh, accept you back. But you have to actually change your, uh, your, your names, okay? There. Okay, so that is a time-lapse assessment that is usually done as your 
follow up. Here, what you do is you reassess. Is the uh, different types of assessment clear? Malino ba yung different types of assessment, guys? Malino yung four types of assessment? Yes, yes sir. Ano, ina ina nakakatulog na ba kayo? No naman po, sir. Okay. So, after this, after knowing the four types of assessment, okay, again, what we do is we collect data. Okay? Now, when we collect data, anong ginagawa natin when we collect data? Okay. What do we do when we collect data? Okay? When we collect data, we actually, we actually use different methods. Okay? We use observation. We observe. Okay? We interview. We observe, we interview, and we examine. Okay, this is what we do when we collect data. Okay, so what are the data that we, yan, hindi ko na explain isa isa yan, no? But what are the data that is important for us to collect? Okay, so when we talk of data, okay, we are referring to subjective and your objective data okay now guys let me ask you this pain where does pain belong subjective or objective pain where does pain belong subjective or objective objective subjective objective objective, objective. subjective sir okay Guys, always remember that your pain, okay? Your pain will always be a subjective data. It will never be an objective data unless there are prior advance notice for that or advance research or study or update for that. But right now, our pain is subjective. Why? What is your subjective data? Subjective data is or are any information that only the client can verify, that only the client can verify. So pain, can you verify, can you verify pain? For, exa for example, you are a student nurse. Sabi ng patient sa'yo, masakit po yung aking likod. Can you verify that masakit talaga yung, uh, yung likod ng pasyente nyo? No, sir. Based from the statement? No, po, no, sir. Yeah, no. Ngayon, sabi, sir, eh gumamit naman ako ng pain scale. Gumamit naman ako ng pain scale. Hindi ba dapat objective na siya? Guys, whether you use a pain scale or not, your pain will still be subjective. Why? Because it is only the client who can verify the pain that he or she is experiencing. You cannot verify, you cannot validate the pain that the patient is experiencing because it's not measurable by you. It's only the client who can measure that by the pain scale. Pero... Sila pa rin yun. You cannot validate it. So, always remember, pain is subjective. Kahit sa book po kayo magpunta, whether it's cushiers, whether it's military, no? pain is actually subjective. Okay? Malinaw ba yan, guys? Malinaw? Yes, yes. sir. Okay. What are the other information? No? Biographical. Okay? Now, biographical information actually... These are subjectives. Nandiyan yung name, nandiyan yung age, no? nandiyan yung uh, religion, nandiyan yung occupation. Okay. These are subjective information, guys. But then, if you will remember in your NCP last time, I am not asking you to put the name, the age, the religion, or the, the, the gender under the subjective data already. Why? Because in our patient chart, there should be a space that is provided for your biographical data. 
Okay? So, that is the reason kung bakit hindi ko na siya ipinapalagay dito. Kasi dapat nandito na siya sa taas, no? Nandiyan na siya yung yung details ng patient nyo para hindi na kayo ma-confuse when you are as, uh, addressing a specific nursing care plan. So, aside from that, we are talking about history of present illness. So, we are talking about history of present illness. So, nandiyan pa rin 'yan. History of present illness or concern, no? So, nandyan yan. Kasama yan sa subjective data. Okay? Personal health history. Personal health history. Okay? Personal health history. Kasama din yan sa subjective data nyo. No? Personal health history. Aside from that, ano pa? Health and lifestyle practices. Okay? Health and lifestyle practices. Yan. Kasama yan sa mga subjective data nyo. No? So all the things that uh, fall under this, this is under your subjective data. Again, your subjective data is any information that a client, that only the client can verify. Okay? So lahat ito, pag-aaralan natin on your week 2. Yung mga biographical data, yung mga history of present illness. So this all falls under your subjective data. Now, what are the information under your objective data? Under the objective data naman, okay, ito pala, ang other terms for this is your uh, symptoms. Symptoms or your cues. No, baka kasi makita nyo sa ibang libro, ganyan. Or covert data, yan. No, covert data. Yan. Yan yung mga tawag dito sa, sa subjective data natin. Now, your objective data, on the other hand, this is your signs. Okay? This is your overt data. This is your overt data. Okay? So, this one, okay, this data or this data are observable and measurable observable and measurable no it's observable and measurable it's observable and measurable by a third party okay measurable detectable observable no by a third party no by a third party meaning this is the total opposite of subjective because subjective can only be verified by the client. Tama ba? No, your objective data, it can be verified by a third party because it's obje uh, observable, it's measurable. No? So meaning you can detect it. How? How can it be observed? How can it be measurable? Because it can be tested. No? It can be tested by a certain standard. It can be tested by a certain standard. No? It can be tested by a certain standard. And usually, what we do in able to get data, we can use our senses. Diba? Sense of sight, hearing, smelling, no? uh, sense of touch, lahat yan. We can use our senses. We can also use the ayapepa, inspection, auscultation, no? percussion, and palpitation, the different uh, modes of observe, uh, of getting data. No? So this one, these are your objective data. So ano yung mga kasama sa objective data natin? Okay, one, physical characteristics. Physical characteristics, okay? So anong ibig sabihin yan? Skin color, okay? Skin color. Skin color falls under your... Physical characteristics. So can you observe skin color? Now observe you bang skin color? Yes, po, sir. So subjective, objective siya? Objective. Objective po. Uh, physical characteristic, posture. Nagawa, nakita nyo, nakaganyan siya. Oh, nakaganyan na yung, yung mananda. Hindi na makatayo, nakaganyan lang siya. Is it subjective or objective? Objective po, sir. Objective po, sir. Objective kasi makikita nyo kung may describe nyo yung, yung posture niya. Not only the client can 
actually verify that, but you also, as a third party, as a medical practitioner or healthcare provider, you can also observe it. No? Body functions. No? Body functions. It's also included here. Body functions. Now, ano yung mga body functions you guys? Heart rate, respiratory rate, your vital signs. No? Kaya, when you put your objective data, laging kasama dyan yung vital signs nyo. Laging kasama dyan yung vital signs nyo. Don't forget your vital signs. What else? Your appearance. Your appearance. Anong ibig sabihin ng appearance? Dugyot ka ba? Diba? Are you dugyot? Or are you clean? No? Are you, are you smelly? Do you smell nice? Diba? So your appearance. Pasok yan dyan. Okay? What else? Your behavior. Your behavior. No? Your behavior. Oh, is the patient irritated? Is the patient happy? Is the patient on a bad mood? Is the patient guarding? No? Guarding his stomach. No? So those are your, uh, your, your, your behavior. Okay? Now what else? Measurements. Now, ano yung mga measurements, guys? These measurements, these are the measurements that you can find that, that we, we actually test the client with. Blood pressure, temperature, weight, height. Di ba? Yan, pasok yan sa measurement. And of course, your laboratory results. This, this uh, things actually falls under your objective data. Okay? Medical records also falls under... Uh, no, this one laboratory results falls under your objective data. Okay, this one falls under your objective data. So, are we clear with what your subjective and your objective data is? Malino ba to? Malino ba to? Yes, sir. Okay, so since that is clear, now guys, in able for you to collect data, you have to actually do an interview. One way is by interview, tama ba? Now, ang interview, very important that we have a pre-introductory phase. Ano ang ginagawa natin sa pre-introductory phase natin during the interview? Anyone? Ano ang ginagawa pag pre-introductory phase? Okay. During the pre-introductory phase, the nurse review medical records. Bakit naman, sir, kailangan ko pang i-review ang medical records ni customer? Okay? Gusto mo ba napupunta ka dun sa kwarto ng pasyente hindi mo alam kung ano yung pag-uusapan nyo? Diba? So the nurse review the medical records. Okay? This will actually assist the nurse. This will assist. This will assist the nurse, no? In conducting the interview by knowing some of the details of your client, no? So if you know some details of your client, like biological information, no? So yun, uh, that is already documented. Then meron ka ng point to start a discussion with your client, and pwede mo lang start on kung saan magsisimula yung iyong interview. Okay? So, the record may also reveal the client's reason for seeking health care. So, very important yan. Pag-uusapan na natin yan pagpasok natin sa health assessment. Then, after the pre-introductory phase, what is the next phase of the interview? Kaninong ano yon? Kaninong phone yon? Naka-open? Kindly mute yourself. Kaninong yon? So after that, what you have is an introductory phase, okay? So ano naman to? When you say introductory phase, this one you have contact already with your client. Contact with client. So anong ginagawa ng nurse dito? Introduce self. That's the first thing. You have to introduce self. You have to explain. Explain the reason for the interview. 
Siyempre, kailangan nating ipaliwanag sa pasyente natin bakit tayo magi interview sa ating pasyente. Okay? Aside from that, you also have to discuss the type of questions. The type of questions, no? The type of questions na maaari mong itanong kay client, no? So, yan. So, this one, you also have to reassure that any information that you will get will be used only for the purpose of tendering care with the client, no? So, you, you have to ensure them that you will provide uh, confidentiality of information, okay? So, you also have to make sure that your patient is comfortable. Now, when you actually do this, when you introduce yourself, where you explain the procedure, when you discuss the uh, question, when you actually make the client comfortable, this one, you are already building rapport. Now, why is it important that you build rapport? Because when you actually build rapport with your clients, it's not rapport, ah, it's rapport. When you build rapport with your clients, then it will be easy no, for the client to cooperate. It will be easy for the client to cooperate. Naiintindihan? Naiintindihan? Nakaka-follow pa so far? Yes, sir. Okay. So here, take note that it's also important that you be conscious about non-verbal and verbal communication. Diba? Pinag-aralan nyo yan. Tama ba? Verbal and non-verbal communication, therapeutic communication. Tama? So, always remember, take into, consider, take into consideration. So, after the introductory phase, you will go to your working phase. So, working phase, this is now the phase where you actually you know, uh, elicit. You know? Ito na yung interview proper, you elicit. Here, you elicit the client's comment or, or, or the client's feedback about major biographic data, reasons for seeking care. No? So here, you are in the interview proper. You are eliciting information or you are exploring with the client. No? Exploring the current scenario or situation with the client. And then, of course, after that, you have your summary and closing phase now guys this one is also important that you actually uh, close or, or summarize whatever has been discussed and close it properly hindi yung sir kailangan ko lang makuha ng ganito okay kinuha mo okay sige bye bye diba that one will not build rapport so it will not it is it will not give, give also a good uh uh impact at the same time no summarizing Okay, summarizing can actually validate if all the information that you get is accurate or the, if, the, if the client or if the patient agrees with whatever information that you get or that you have noted. Okay, so that is the importance of summary and closing. Closing, you make sure that you close it properly because this one will actually uh, build a better communication or a better rapport between you and the patient okay so far do you have any question about the interview process do you have any uh any question about the interview process meron wala meron wala meron wala so what is the question again po sir do you have any question so far none sir okay so sa module nyo makikita nyo ang nakalagay dyan is opening body and Closing, okay? So those are the three major parts. Opening, body, and closing. Kasi according to the book of Kojir, that is the important part that we have to take note, okay? But this one that I discussed, this is also essential kasi as a health assessment, you have to, to understand uh, more on the interview process, okay? So, ayan. So tapos na tayo sa interview. Saan na tayo pupunta? Okay. So after getting the data, you all, then the next step that you have, so nakuha mo na si subjective, nakuha mo na si objective data, the next thing that you do is you have to organize 
no? In organizing data, you just put it in a system, no? Sometimes you use conceptual framework like the Gordon's function and health pattern framework. So USL actually used the Gordon's 11 health function uh, pattern framework, no? Then after organizing data, you have to validate the data, no? Halimbawa, sabi ni, ni patient, Ito, this is one of the major concerns when I checked your NCP before. Sabi ni patient, uh, nahihirapan na kong huminga. Okay. Sabi to ni patient, nahihirapan na kong huminga. Sabi nyo, as verbalized by the patient. Guys, correct, that is subjective because this is verbalized by the patient. Diba? But then, you need to have supporting data that will actually validate the patient claim. So, ano, for example, sabi ni Kay, ako may... So, you can take note objective data. Use of accessory muscle for breathing. Diba? Tama? Or the client is massaging the... Kasi action yun eh, di ba? Kanina diniscuss natin what are the things that can be discussed in the... Uh, what can be defined in the objective data. Client is massaging the chest area. Di ba? Or purse lip breathing. Purse lip breathing. Now, guys, if you have this information, if you have this objective data, can you confirm that the client is experiencing difficulty of breathing? Yes. 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 So when you collect subjective data, you should be able to validate it. And usually when we validate the subjective data, we base it from the objective data that we have. Okay, Malino Bayon. So that is why you have to validate it. So that's why you have to get complete factual. Okay, complete factual and accurate information. Okay, so these are the things that you will need to take note. Okay, because when you validate, you have to make sure that it's complete, it's actually and it's accurate. Validation is actually double checking. Huh? Validation is also known as double checking or verifying the data. Okay, then if you are able to verify everything, the next step that you need to do under assessment is documentation. Okay, in your documentation, make sure that you put in everything. Bakit? Whatever is written, you have done that. Whatever is not written or is not documented, it has not been done. Okay? So, yan. Tandaan nyo yan. So, malino na ba ang assessment? Malino na ba ang assessment? Yes, please, Okay, so after assessment, saan tayo pupunta? Okay, after assessment, saan tayo pupunta? We will go with our diagnosing phase. Now guys, dito tandaan nyo that the success of your diagnosing phase is dependent on your, on where? assessment phase, okay? So if your assessment phase is complete, factual, accurate, reliable, then very more or less magiging maganda ang diagnosing phase nyo. So diagnosing, this is the second part, okay? Hindi naman natin kailangan, alam nyo naman lahat yan. Second part of the nursing process. It's the second part of the nursing process. Okay, and it's pivotal. It's important, no? It's pivotal or important. Because because if you do not do the diagnosing phase, you will not move to the planning phase. Okay. So kagaya ni sinabi natin kanina, what do you have to do in the diagnosing phase? One is you interpret. Yan interpret the assessment data. You have to interpret the 
assessment data. So again, kung ang data nyo is very good, may interpret, may interpret nyo siya na maayos. But if your data is not that good, then you will have problem in interpreting or you might not have a very good interpretation of your data. Okay? So aside from that, okay, so when you interpret, you analyze. Okay? This one is you analyze. So aside from that, ano pa ang ginagawa natin? So we, the second one is we identify health problems. Identify health problems. Now, when we talk of health problems, it can be an actual or it can be a potential health problems. Can you follow, guys? Can you follow? Okay. Can you still follow? Can you still follow? Yes, sir. Okay. So for those who are present, kindly type 1. Kindly type 1. Ay, wag pa lang 1. Kindly type andito. Andito. Kindly type andito. For those who are present, kindly type andito. Para alam ko lang na nandyan pa kayo't nakikinig. Okay? Yan. So here... Aside from uh, aside from determining the actual and potential health problems, ano pa ang nagagawa dito? We can identify the risks, factors, and the strengths. No, we can identify the risk factors and the strengths of our client. Okay, we can identify the risk factors and the strengths of our client, and then after that, we can now formulate. We can now formulate your nursing. Uh, your diagnostic statements, okay? We can now formulate your diagnostic statements, okay? Now, important, when you formulate diagnostic statements, you have to actually use the NANDA, okay? So, nasa inyo pa ba yung NANDA na i namin last sem? Nasa inyo pa yung NANDA? Okay. Yes, so, so, you have to actually do use that okay now there are different kinds of diagnosis okay there are different kinds of diagnosis so what are the different kinds of diagnosis okay so we have different kinds of diagnosis okay so what are the different kinds of diagnosis that we have the first one is actual diagnosis okay now by the term itself actual diagnosis this is actually <laughs> actual diagnosis is the client's problem at present no problem at present so this may be the reason why the client actually seek professional or medical help okay so this is the problem at present or during Assessment. Can still follow? Can still follow? Okay. Now, for example, si client nagpunta sa hospital, nahirap ang huminga, so the problem may be ineffective airway, uh, ineffective breathing pattern. Okay? If the client is anxious, it can be anxiety. Diba? So these are your actual diagnosis. So aside from actual diagnosis, you can have your health promotion diagnosis. Now, guys, your health creation, uh, your health promotion diagnosis, this is actually related to clients' preparedness. No, kailangan may clients' preparedness. Yeah, to implement. behaviors to implement behaviors to change or improve to improve their health condition okay so this is a prerequisite guys anong ibig sabihin niyan when you are creating a health promotion diagnosis okay it is very important that your client actually verbalize preparedness. For example, 
you have a client, you have a smoker client. So may, may client ka, smoker. Diagnosed with cancer. Tapos sabi ni client sa'yo, gusto ko nang itigil ang Yossi. Now, if your client tells this, does this qualify that you can actually do health promotion diagnosis? Ha? Huh? Pag sinabi ni client, gusto ko nang itigil ang Yossi, pwede na ba kayo magawa ng health promotion diagnosis? Pen, pen, disara, pen, diba? Two, ten. Oh, meron pa ba akong kausap? Yes, sir. Oh, pag sinabi ni client, gusto ko nang itigil ang Yossi, pwede na ba kayong gumawa ng health promotion diagnosis? Again, what, what is the consideration? There should be client preparedness to implement behaviors to improve their health condition. So nung sinabi ni client, gusto ko nang itigil ang Yossi, no? sabi niya, gusto ko nang itigil ang Yossi. Do you think there is preparedness already? May preparedness na ba? Ten, ten, desire, ten, diba? Two, ten. Guys, may kausap pa ba ako? Yes, sir. Kasi may willingness yung client. Yes, because the client already showed willingness, no? Willingness to stop smoking. So you can do health promotion, diagnosis. So dito, pag diagnose mo siya, may health promote. Uh, this one is to promote health. Yun yung gagawin mo sa kanya kasi may willingness na siya. You cannot do health promotion diagnosis if your client is not prepared. So there should always be preparedness, no? Dapat merong preparedness to implement behaviors by the client. Okay? So, malinaw yan, ha? So, dapat meron siyang verbalization of being prepared. Okay? Now, ay la, tumago ang aking pen. Okay. Now, the third one, no? The third one. What type of diagnosis is the third one? We have the Risk, oh, is it raining sa inyo? Umuulan dito sa amin. Risk nursing diagnosis. Okay? Risk nursing diagnosis. Ano naman ang risk nursing diagnosis? This one is a clinical judgment. No? Anong ibig sabihin niyan? This is a clinical judgment the problem that the problem does not exist yet, okay? The problem is not yet present. So there is no problem yet, but there is a presence of risk factor, okay? So again, this is a clinical judgment that there is no presence of the problem yet, but there is the presence of risk factor. So this risk factor, okay? can actually lead to can actually lead to development of health problems okay can actually lead to development of health problems so this one is your risk diagnosis okay and then the number 4 is your number 4 is your Syndrome diagnosis. Now, your syndrome diagnosis simply, it's also a clinical judgment that describe, no? It describe a cluster. It describe a cluster of nursing diagnosis, okay? It describes a cluster of nursing diagnosis, okay? So, yeah. Cluster of nursing diagnosis that have 
similar intervention that have similar intervention. Okay? So, malinaw ba yung different types of, uh, of diagnosis? Malinaw ba yung different types of diagnosis? My question? None po, sir. None. Okay. Ay, hindi na yata pwedeng mag-ano. Hanggang 20 lang. Okay. Now, what are the components of your nursing diagnosis, guys? What are the components of your nursing diagnosis? First, you should have to you should have your P or your problem. Problem. Yes. So your problem, this is your diagnostic label. This is your diagnostic label okay so when you say diagnostic label it actually describe it actually describes the clients or describe or describes okay the client's health problem or response no the client's health problem or response Okay, yan yung ating problem. So for example, uh, for example, uh, ineffective airway or ineffective breathing pattern. So that is a problem, okay? Then we also have the E, which is your etiology, etiology, okay? So etiology, this is actually uh, a component, okay, that defines, okay, it defines the possible or probable cause of the problem. Now, if you will connect the problem in etiology, it is always connected by the word RT or in other words, related to. Okay? So always remember that, that guys, huh? So it is always connected by the word RT or in other words, uh, in, in, uh, in definition, it means related to, okay? Now, aside from that, you have to have your S, okay? So what is your S? These are your signs and symptoms or otherwise known as your defining characteristics. So when we talk of your defining characteristics, we are talking about the subjective and the objective data. Okay? So these are the components. No? So we have P, E, S. Now, for you as a student, okay, and for you students, we are actually encouraging you to use the PES format. Okay? So here, uh, the, the etiology and the signs and symptoms is always connected by the word AMB, no, as manifested by or as evidenced by. Okay? So, yeah. So, problem related to as manifested by, then you put your signs and symptoms. Okay? So, these are your components. Now, this, this one, okay, because there are different... Uh, types of diagnosis statements, okay? There are three parts, two parts, okay? So this one is a three-part statement. When we say three-part statement, okay, when we say three-part statement, you have your problem, you have your etiology, and you have your defining char characteristics, okay? So you have your problem, you have your etiology, and defining characteristics. Problem related to etiology as manifested by your signs and symptoms. So this is the three-part statement. So for example, let's give an example. Uh, ano bang example ang meron tayo? Sa mga possible example. Okay. So an example, the problem is 
situational low self esteem. Situational low self esteem related to feeling of rejection by the husband as manifested by no hypersensitivity to criticism semicolon then client states i don't know if i can manage by myself and i can manage and okay that's it i can manage by myself okay so here guys let's 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 look at this uh problem that is part of uh, that is in your module also okay uh, and rejects positive feedback. Nakalagay pa dun. And rejects positive feedback. Da, da, da. Okay. So if you will see here, the problem is situational low self-esteem. This one is the problem. And I think this one, you can actually find it in your nanda. No? Situational low self-esteem. And you will see here related to, which is uh, emphasizing that the etiology is feeling of rejection by the husband. So meaning this patient has a situational low steam and the cause of that is that there is a feeling that the husband is rejecting her already. So what is the manifestation? What is the defining characteristics? Okay. How can you say that the husband is rejecting this patient? So sabi ni patient, I don't know if I can manage by myself. Rejected positive uh, uh, feedback and there is hypersensitivity to criticism. Okay, so as manifested by. So this one is a three part statement. You have your problem, you have your etiology or the possible source of the problem, and you have the defining characteristics or the supporting information, which can actually uh, validate or uh, support your problem and your etiology. Okay, so naiintindihan ba? So this is a three part. Now, we also have the so-called two-part statement, okay? Okay, we also have what we call the two-part statement. Now, when we talk of the two-part statement, you will only have the problem and the etiology. Usually, this happens under your risk diagnosis. Usually, this happens under your risk diagnosis. So here... You just state the problem and the possible source of, or and the possible source, etiology, or source of the problem. Bakit wala siyang signs and symptoms or manifestation? Kasi hindi pa siya nag exist Okay? Kasi hindi pa siya nag exist Kaya your risk diagnosis, usually it has only two-part statement. Has the problem and has the etiology. Okay, that is your two-part statement. Okay, mali now. Meron ding one-part statement, which is the problem alone. But for nursing students like you, what we do is the three-part statement. Okay, what we do is the three-part statement. Okay, yeah. For those who are taking the quiz, ha, if, if you want, you can actually leave the, 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 the class already so that you can prepare for your, for your class. And then you just come back if uh, I'm, I'm still having uh, the lecture, okay? Just come back. Okay, so mali now. Now, when you make a nursing diagnosis, it is also very important, okay, guys, that you differentiate nursing diagnosis, medical diagnosis, and your collaborative. Kasi ito, nakikita ko to eh. Merong mga, may mga bata naglalagay and collaborative diagnosis. Okay? 
So what do you mean by uh, what do you mean by nursing diagnosis? Okay, this one is done by the nurse per se. For example, your nursing diagnosis it can be ineffective airway clearance. This is your nursing diagnosis. Pagdating naman sa medical diagnosis, nakalagay na dyan is pneumonia. Okay? Pagdating sa collaborative, uh, it will be a different type of diagnosis. No, It can be interagency or inter-medical uh, care facility. No, So, collaborative uh, problem statement. So, pwede rin siyang uh, complication or something. So, that is, uh, that is a difference. No, But basically, we usually see the nursing and the medical diagnosis. That one, we just have to know exactly kung paano natin i-differentiate yung nursing diagnosis and medical diagnosis. Okay? So, yan. Kaya, eto, itong nursing diagnosis natin, it is based on NANDA. Now, na NANDA, NANDA, I inter or NANDA International, they actually updated, guys. Kaya yung binigay namin sa inyo, updated doon kasi uh, NANDA International always, no, always update always update the list. No, meron silang inaalis. Kagaya ng dati, meron pa diyang increased body temperature. Ngayon, high, uh, thermoregulation na lang ang nakalagay. No? So, kailangan maging familiar kayo doon. Kasi right now, there are 244 nursing diagnosis that has been created. There are 13 domains, if I'm not mistaken. And under that domains, there are different classes. No, and under the classes, then you will fall your nursing diagnosis. So that's why it is very important that you know. So I will suggest, okay, I will suggest that at least you actually have a list of the nursing diagnosis, okay? So that when you are given a situation and you have all your subjective and objective data, okay, then you can just look under which class, no, under which domain does your problem occurs para mas madali, para hindi nyo na hinahanap yung buong, yung buong libro kung nasaan siya. Okay? So at least the, the, there is this chart wherein you will have the domain, no? then the class is on the side, and then it will list you all the possible nursing diagnosis there. You can at least have that so that uh, you can, uh, it can assist you. No? so that it can assist you in your nursing diagnosis phase, okay? So far, may tanong kayo, guys. So far, may tanong kayo. So far, may tanong kayo. Why that? Okay. So I will uh, I will give you a 10-minute break. For those who would like to, to be excused for the quiz, you can go already. For those who would like to stay, uh, we will uh, go through. Malapit, malapit naman kasi planning implementing and evaluating na lang yung gagawin natin. So I give you a 10 minutes break. Okay? All you have to do is just uh, well, go to the toilet, go to the restroom. No, I, I'm just going to uh, to drink some water. Kasi naubos na ang tubig ko. And then I'll get back. Okay? Uh, is there any, if you have any question, just prepare the questions that you have. I will be more than willing to answer your questions. Okay? So just give me a uh, just give me ten minutes, okay? Clear. Thank you.
Okay, may nadira pa. Thank you for staying. Yan. Carry pa ba? Kaya pa makinig? I assume you're from set 1 and 2, right? Tama ba? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, okay. Let's go lang tayo. Continue tayo with the discussion, no? So, saan ako nag-stop kanina sa, sa three-part and two-part statements? Ay, saan din? Tapos na pala. Saan na pala tayo? Okay. So, tapos na tayo sa diagnosing. May questions ba kayo? Set 1 and set 2. Set 1 and set 2. Especially if you have clarifications kasi majority of you, I think, I wasn't able to handle last sem. So, may question ba kayo? Maybe I can answer. Wala naman. It's okay, ah. Hindi ako nangangain ng tao. So if you if you would like to ask questions, just go ahead. Just ask it. Para masagot natin, no? Maybe your question will be also beneficial for other members or for other people in the group, no? So, Sir, guys, yes. Me po. Yes. Sir, in case po ba na nag kami and... Before ay for for the quiz po sir pwede pa rin po kami bumalik pag nahabol po namin sir. Yes. Okay sir, thank you so much okay po. Okay lang. Okay. Sige. Okay. Now. Nasaan na tayo? Sa so, tapos na tayo sa assessment. Okay, tapos na tayo sa assessment. Tapos na tayo sa diagnosing. Okay, so again, when you assess, you have to make it Accurate. You have to make it complete. You have to make it factual. You have to make it reliable. No? Why? Because it will be the basis of your diagnosis. Okay? Or your diagnosing phase. If your diagnosing is not, uh, uh, if your assessment is not good, if you have a poor assessment, what will happen? There will be a poor Diagnosing, what will happen? There will be a poor planning, no? And so on. So it will snowball. It will snowball. That's why when you actually, okay, when you actually uh, do your nursing care plan, you must make sure, no? You must make sure that you have, you have done your assessment thoroughly, okay? You have done your assessment thoroughly okay so that is the key there okay assess thoroughly then you have to diagnose now in diagnosing all you have to do is familiar with the pes format okay be familiar with your nanda international okay be familiar with the subjective and objective data what are classified subjective and objective data okay so that when you actually validate and evaluate, when you actually validate, when you actually evaluate the data, it can actually give you, it can give you a better understanding of the problem. Okay, naiintindihan? Better understanding of the problem. Okay, so that is, that is uh, the importance of your uh, diagnosing phase. Now, if you are done with the diagnosis, okay, if you are done with the diagnosis, the next step is planning. Now, this one, guys, this uh, planning phase is a little tedious, okay? It's not tedious, but you must be thorough, okay? You must be knowledgeable. Thorough, T-O-H-O-R-O-U-G-H. Eh, ano ba spelling thorough? Oh, mahin, kakahiyak pa spelling. Okay. So in your planning phase, okay, in your planning phase, you should be knowledgeable, okay? So meaning you should have enough knowledge enabled for you to develop, no, to develop a plan of care for your patient or for your client. So this one is very important, huh? So you should have enough knowledge so that you can develop a plan of care for your client. Because if you do not have knowledge, anong gagamitin mo sa planning mo? Wala. Di ba? So here, in planning, 
there are two important things that we do in planning, okay? These are the two important things that we do, okay? But aside from this, uh, if you will look in the illustration in the module, no, meron siyang mga different uh, aspects, no? In planning, you will get, first is setting priorities. Setting. First is setting priorities, no? Okay, first is setting priorities. This is the first one. And then the next thing that you will do during your planning phase is you establish, no? You establish goals and desired outcome. You establish goals and desired outcome. Okay, and then you select Nursing intervention. And number four, you write your nursing intervention. Okay. Now, these are the steps that you will have to do. Now, basically, no, it is very important that in your planning page, uh, planning phase, you have to know how to prioritize. Okay, back it. Kasi, if you don't know how to prioritize, then you will have a problem when you deliver the nursing care. So, punta tayo. No? So, again, as a planning phase tayo, we are now going to prioritize. Okay, we are now going to set priorities. Okay, set priorities. Okay, so we are going to set priorities okay so what are the things that we do when we set priorities okay now this is uh, a process okay this is a process of determining this is a process of determining which nursing problems will be addressed first. Okay? So again, your, uh, your setting priorities, it's a process, okay? So it's a process wherein you will be able to determine which nursing problem or problems will be addressed first, okay? So dito, we do prioritization. Now, when you do prioritization, there are three levels of priority. Okay, the first one is the so-called high priority. The second one is the medium priority. And the third one is the low priority. Okay, so these are the priorities that you have when you actually set. So by, by nature or by right, those high priorities, these are the things or these are the problems that we need to address first. Back it. What are the problems under your high priority? These are life threatening. These are life threatening problems, okay? These are life threatening problems that if not ad uh, addressed or treated, can actually cause to uh, death or uh, more complications, no? These are life-threatening problems. Uh, example nyan is impaired respiratory and cardiac functions. Guys, do you think problem with the respiratory and the cardiac functions of your heart? Do you think this is this is life threatening? Life threatening, ba siya? Yes, sir. Yes. So these are considered as your life threatening. Okay. Now, pag sinabi nating medium, ano naman yung medium, no? These are health threatening. Hindi siya life threatening. These are health threatening problems no 
such as acute illness and decreased coping abilities. For example, cancer, no, acute illness, and uh, decreased coping abilities. Okay, and then we also have the low. Now, ano yung low? Eto namang low na to, low priorities. This uh, may result from uh, may result from delayed development, delayed development, or cost destructive physical or emotional cost destructive physical and emotional stress or changes okay now guys so yeah so these are the different types of priorities so pag nang nakita nyo the patient is experiencing a life threatening event already then you have to go to high priority yan lagi yung unahin nyo now there are different types on there are different ways on how you prioritize Basically, the most common right now is your. Lang guys, ah. The most uh, common being used, no? Because when when you set priorities, there are different ways on how you can set priorities. Some actually use the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's. Are you familiar with the Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Diba? So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, there are five levels. The first one is, anong nasa pinakang una? Physiologic ba? Tama? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then the next one you will have safety and security. Tama ba? And then you have love and belongingness. And then you have self-esteem. And then you have self-actualization. Diba? These are the five levels. So when you say physiologic needs, these are our basic needs. And then yung food. Nandiyan yung water. Nandiyan yung air. Diba? So everything na kailangan natin and able for us to survive, nandiyan sa physiologic needs. So sabi ni Abraham Maslow, if you actually meet your physiologic needs, then you can actually move forward to the second stage, which is safety and security. And if you will be able to meet safety and security, then you can go to the next stage, which is love and belongingness. And if you have... Uh, physiologic, if you have safety and security, if you have love and belongingness, you can move on to the fourth one, which is the self-esteem until you become self-actualized. Okay? So, when you prioritize, you can actually use the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So, if the patient's uh, need falls under the physiologic needs, then that one is your top priority. So, for, so that, is, uh, that is considered. Okay? Now, Another way is by using the A, B, C. So what is A, B, C, guys? A is for airway. airway. Yes, what is it? Airway. Breathing and circulation. Breathing and circulation. Okay? So usually we see this in emergency situations, your airway, your breathing, and your circulation. So yung mga mahilig manood, manood dyan ng Korean novella, ako nanonood ako ng Korean novella, but I only watch Korean novella that is medical in nature. If it's not medical in nature, yung mga law, no? Yan. Yan yung pinapanood ko. No? So kalimitan, merong mga cases na makikita nyo may emergency. Di ba? Bawa. I'm not sure kung anong Korean novela yun na nagkaroon ng, ng accident. Yung magaling siyang doc doctor, something siya, okay, na nasa province siya. So, nagkaroon ng bus, uh, ng bus accident, nakasakay siya sa bus. So, nagkaroon ng bus accident, madaming, madaming tao ang, ang affected na nakasakay dun sa bus, no? If you will see, pinipili niya yung pasyente na pinupuntahan niya o ina-approach niya. Bakit? Hindi lahat ng patients sinisave niya. 
Bakit? Kasi guys, we have a rule. Once it's in an emergency situation, when you do triage, okay, that is what they call it. They call it triage. Okay? So the rule when you do triage is to save as many lives as possible. Okay? So for example, if you see that there is a patient, no? Nangangailangan siya ng CPR kasi nagka-cardiac nagka arrest siya. Inaatake siya sa puso. So kailangan mong i-CPR. Tapos, meron kang nakitang patient na merong broken nose. Sino mo unahin mo guys? Si patient with CPR or patient with broken nose? With CPR, sir. Mm. Okay, guys. In our emergency situation, hindi mo unahin ang patient with CPR. Kahit pa yan is airway, breathing, or circulation. Bakit? The rule is to save as many as possible. Ngayon, ilang tao ang kailangan mo para makapaggawa ka ng successful CPR? At least two. Tama? Tama? Yes, please. Now, ang isang tao nagpapap. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30. Then, yung isang tao nagbibigay ng air. Imagine, in an emergency situation, the time that it will take for that two person can, is very long. No? Kasi ang CPR naman, hindi mo lang siya bibigay na isang beses. So, instead of assisting this, medics will actually look for other people whom they can actually save. No? Kaya kung makikita nyo, kung makikita nyo mga concepts, yung mga tao na higher ang chances, higher ang chances of survival, mas nauuna yung ina-assist. Nauuna sila. Okay? Those that has lower chances of survival, o yung talagang mga medyo mamatay na talaga siya, kahit ano yan, they will be the last to be attended to. Okay? That is the... That is your triage. Okay? So it doesn't necessarily follow na laging ABC. So may, meron tayong mga rules dyan. During health assessment, I will share it with you. Kasi meron tayong nilatawag na red patients, may green patients, may yellow patients, and may black patients. Red patients, these are those patients who are actually uh, needing priority. Priority health, uh, priority care. Green patients, these are the patients na medyo okay lang, no? So ito, guys ha, this one is, itong in-explain ko sa inyo, this one is in an emergency crisis or situation, vehicular accident, no? Hindi siya yung normal setting, ha? So lagi tayong may triage. Pagdating sa ganitong scenario, uh, what we uh, our rule is to save as many as possible. Nakukuha niyo ba, guys? Baka mamaya ma-misquote niyo eh. Nakukuha niyo ba? Naiintindihan? Yes, please. Okay, so that is in this one, this example is an emergency situation only, okay? But if you are in a hospital setting, if you are in a healthcare facility, then you can actually follow airway, breathing, and circulation. You can follow the Maslow hierarchy of needs because there is a system that can support there, okay? But if you are in emergency, well, for example, vehicular accident, plane crash, no, uh, you have to do a triage. Okay, so you have to attend first to, uh, you have to save as many people as possible, as many lives as possible. Okay, so malinaw siya, naiintindihan? Naiintindihan? Yes, po, sir. Okay, so malinaw rin yung mga priority natin, yung mga high, medium, and low priority. Okay, so I hope malinaw yan. So again, this is life-threatening, this is medical threat, medically threatening or health-threatening. This one is just caused by delayed, no? Uh, delayed and emotional changes. Okay, so yan, hindi siya ganun ka, hindi siya ganun ka significant, no? Meaning, even if it treat mo siyang last, mabubuhay pa rin yung pasyente mo kasi wala siyang ganun ka complication, okay? So yan. Now, let's go to the next one. So after setting priorities, your next step is to establish, no? Your next step is to establish client goals and desired outcomes. Client goals and 
desired outcomes. Client goals and desired outcomes. Now, your client goals and desired outcomes, these are the things that you would like to happen or to uh, or the client to, uh, to achieve, okay? So what is the purpose of this? Why are you setting or establishing client goals and desired outcome? So the first one is it will provide, it will provide direction, okay? It will provide direction for planning nursing intervention. Okay, so it will provide direction for planning intervention. The next thing is that your uh, establishing client goals or desired outcome, it will serve as a criteria, no? It will serve as a criteria. It will serve as a criteria for evaluating client's progress. For evaluating client's progress okay and number three another thing the another purpose is that it enable it enabled the client and the nurse to determine Yeah, to determine when the problem has been resolved, okay? When the problem Dali lang, I may message. When the problem has been resolved, okay? And then number four, this actually help motivate. This actually help motivate, motivate the client and the nurse as well by providing sense of achievement, no? Sense of Achievement. So look at here, guys. Okay, isa isa natin yan. So the first one, when you establish client goal or desired outcomes, it will give you direction for planning nursing intervention. Okay, so it will give you direction for planning nursing intervention. Okay, so the, the keyword here is direction. Okay, so direction for planning nursing intervention. For example, if you do not plan Okay, if you do not plan and there is a patient that you receive from the ER, okay, halimbawa galing siyang ER to the ward, okay, ER to ward. No? Pagdating ng ER, in-endorse sa'yo. Pagdating sa ward, no, hindi ka marunong gumawa ng client goals and desired outcome. So pagdating sa'yo, ang una nangyari kay patient, tumaas ang temperature. So, ang ginawa mo, nagbigay ka ng TSB. Afterwards, tumaas ang BP. Anong ginawa mo? You promoted, promoted rest. Okay, then refer. Diba? Ano pa? You elevate. Diba? Nagka na positioning. Yan. Then afterwards, nakita mo nagkaroon ng difficulty of breathing. Diba? So, ginawa mo ulit positioning. Then, refer. Then, afterwards, nagkaroon uli ng fever. Yung temperature uli. So, bumalik ka uli sa TSB. Tapos, nagkaroon pa namang additional complaints. Imagine, if you do not plan, no? if you do not plan, if you do not set your goals or desired outcomes, walang direction. Paglabas nito, ito yung inassist mo. Nung lumabas si BP ito, nung lumabas si DOB ito, tapos nung lumabas ulit si fever, balik ka ulit kay fever. ba? Anong nangyayari? Nakakapagod. 
hindi mo ngayon mo monitor which one is which alin diyan dapat yung uunahin ko di ba baka mamaya iniisip mo yung temperature kasi yung unang lumabas pero the difficulty of breathing hindi mo na pasi sa difficulty of breathing si pasyente mo na tegi dead di ba so sino may kasalanan kasi po yung NCP hindi ko nagawa kasalanan ba ni NCP hindi sino may kasalanan si nurse kasi hindi siya na attend properly ni nurse kasi si nurse wasn't able to create a client goal or desired outcome or NCP as a whole so walang direction yung planning niya hindi niya napansin nagkaroon ng difficulty of breathing no nagkaroon ng difficulty of breathing tumaas nang tumaas ang fever ni patient nagkaroon ng fluid volume excess dahil may fluid volume excess na kay pasyente nagkaroon siya ng pulmonary edema nagkaroon siya ng pulmonary edema hindi na nakahinga na tegi si patient RIP di ba so pwedeng mangyari yan pwedeng mangyari yan if you do if you are not uh, if you are not uh, familiar or if you are not aware on what are the things that you have to attend to first that's why it's very important that you actually know how to okay that you actually know how to prioritize and after prioritizing after prioritizing you have to you have to make your decision okay you have to actually after prioritizing you actually have to ayan after prioritizing you have to make a plan of care sorry not decision you have to make a plan of care okay Okay na ako tong alsin. Sandali lang guys ha. Okay. Ando, 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 ando ko na nga lang. Clear. Clear my drawings. Ay, naku, nawala yung drawings ko. Ando. Ayun. Hehehe. <laughs> Clear. Okay. So yan. So malinaw? Malinaw yun? Nakakafollow pa kayo guys? Nakakasunod pa? Nakakasunod pa? Yes po sir. Okay, the next thing is that, okay, when you actually create a client goals or desired outcome, it serves as a criteria for evaluating the client's health progress. Okay, bakit? Diba, when you create a plan or desired outcome, okay, anong ginagawa natin dyan? Meron tayong rule dyan, diba? So when you when you become uh, when you create your plan of care it should be first is it it should be smart okay so specific measurable attainable realistic and time bounded so it will actually gives you a way to measure if your clients if there is any clients progress or not okay so it will give you a way to measure or evaluate if there is clients progress or not if you have a properly written goal okay now it enabled the client and the nurse to determine when the problem has been resolved kasi diba when you make a plan of care your plan of care you should actually discuss it with your client okay kasi your client should be part of your uh, plan of care kasi client will be the one to deliver it diba it's better that the client is always part of your nursing care plan of, of your plan of care so when you actually do this no properly the client and the nurse they will be able to determine whether the problem has been resolved or not at pag na resolve yan it will give them a motivation okay it will give them a motivation because of the sense of achievement okay nakukuha nakukuha yan is it clear now now puna tayo what are the components what are the components no components of your goals or desired outcome what are the components of your goals or desired outcome this is the this is this is important guys so alam mo na na kailangan mong gumawa ng goals or desired outcome so ano yung mga important components ng goals and desired outcome one is you should have the subject so when we talk of the subject, who is your subject, guys? Who is your subject? Who will be the subject here? Clients. Very good. 
it will be your client or it will be your patient. That is the subject. No? It will be the subject of care. So after having the subject, you should have a verb. Now, a verb is actually an action word. Okay, It's actually an action word that the client needs to perform. So it's an action that the client needs to do. Okay, So that is the verb. And the last component is actually conditions or modifiers. Conditions or modifiers. Okay. Conditions or modifiers. Ano naman to? This one will explain the circumstances under which the behavior is to be performed. Okay. So these are the basic. These are the components of your uh, goals and desired outcome. But when you actually create your goals, you should always consider that it should be smart. Okay. Now, what is smart? What is smart? It should be specific. Okay. It should be specific, meaning there is a clear understanding on what the patient will need to do. Okay. Or what the client needs to do. Okay. It should also be measurable. It should also be measurable. Okay. It should also be attainable. It should also be realistic, okay? And also be time bound, okay? Now, question guys, okay? For example, here is your, kasi pasok yan eh, subject is the client, ganun pa rin verb, yung action word, nandyan pa rin siya. Conditions or modifiers, you just have to make it that it's smart, okay? So for example, here is your, uh, here is your plan. After 30 minutes of tepid sponge bath, the client's body temperature will decrease from 40 degrees Celsius to 36.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so here is our plan. Okay. Here is our plan. Now, okay. now let's uh let's check let's check it, huh? So guys, is there a subject here? May subject? Yes, ito yung subject, client. My verb? Yes, ito yon, TSB. Conditions? Yes, ito yon, decrease from 40 degrees Celsius to 36.5 degrees Celsius. Are we able to meet the components, guys? Na meet ba natin yung components ng goals or desired outcome? Na meet ba natin yung components ng goals or desired outcome? Nandiyan to ba kayo? Namit ba natin yung components ng goals or desired outcome? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Namit natin kasi may subject, may verb, and may conditions. Now, the question, is this plan of care, is this is smart? First question, is this is specific? Is specific ba siya? Yes, po. Yes, bakit? Very specific siya. After 30 minutes, TSB. Gagawin TSB, yung body temperature dapat bumaba ng 40 to 36.5 degrees Celsius. Measurable ba siya? Yes, po. Yes, bakit? Kasi there is a criteria here that you can evaluate or measure from 40 degrees Celsius to 36.5 degrees Celsius. Time-bounded ba siya? Yes, please. Yes, dahil dito meron tayong 30 minutes. Now, the question is, is it attainable? Is it attainable?
Anyone? There is no right and wrong answer, guys. Just, just shoot. Is this attainable? Miss Guillermo, is this attainable? Wala si Ms. Guillermo. Mr. Manzano, are you still there? Yes, sir. So is this attainable? Yes, sir. It is still attainable. It is still attainable. But the question is, is it still is it realistic? It depends on the condition of the patient, sir, or any underlying factors, sir. Our condition is here. This is this is the this is the we're just uh, looking at this nursing care plan. This this uh, no, this uh, this goal or desired outcome. Just uh, just this one. Wala tayong ibang titingnan. After thirty minutes. Yes, sir. It can be realistic, sir. Mm, okay. Now that is the question, guys. Ah, it can be confusing. Bakit? Is this a attainable that within thirty minutes? your patient's body temperature will decrease from 40 to 36.5 degrees Celsius. Yes, that is attainable. Okay, attainable yan. But then, with this, giving situation, with, this, with this given situation, is it realistic? Remember, guys, what will you do? 30 minutes, you will just give tepid sponge bath. Pupunasan mo lang si pasyente. Ngayon, do you think within 30 minutes, if the patient's temperature is 40 point uh, 40 degrees Celsius, Celsius, pinunasan mo siya, bababa yun ang 36.5 degrees Celsius. Ang ginawa lang natin na is pinunasan lang natin. Anyone? Mr. Manzano, do you think bababa ang temperature from 40 to 36.5 by just giving a tepid sponge bath? No, sir. Baka pa unti-unti lang po, sir. Paunti-unti lang. So this one is not realistic. Okay? Kasi ang inilagay lang dito is tepid sponge bath. But, for example, eh, sir, sabi mo attainable. Yes, correct. Is it, it's attainable. Pero paano? Aside from, from tepid sponge bath, you will give other, uh, other uh, nursing actions. Like, for example, give antipyretic medication. Diba? Nagbigay ka ng anti-fever. Drugs. Ayan. Posible. Bumaba talaga yan within 30 minutes. Nag-TSB ka na. Diba? Tapos, you, you promote yung proper clothing. Yung kung saan pwedeng mag-release ng heat ng patient mo. So, yan pwede. Attainable yan. But then, if your action is only giving tepid sponge bath, pinunasan mo lang si pasyente mo, ang time frame mo is 30 minutes, dapat in 30 minutes, pagkatapos mong punasan si pasyente, bumaba yung kanyang body temperature from 40 to 36.5 degrees Celsius, that is not realistic. Okay, pag nangyari yan, meaning there is a sudden decrease in body temperature, then there might be another cause of that, not the tepid sponge bath. And we may have to monitor closely kung bakit. Biglang ang taas-taas, biglang nag-drop. No? It is not be, be, mainly because of your tepid sponge bath. More or less, there, is other, there are other factors that may contribute to that. Okay, malinaw. Naiintindihan niyo yung SMART? Yung specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bounded? Naiintindihan na? Yes, please. Okay, very good. No? Well, yes, so it, okay, very good. So that one it should always be smart, no, and you should it should always have the three components. Okay, now. Ano pa ba nakalagay niyo dito? Madami pa kasi other uh, other other factors that you have to provide or components of a good um di a good Outcome statements, aside from dun sa binigay ko, meron kang standard approved medical or English symbols, be specific, no, refer, tailor a plan, ensure nandun siya sa ano nyo. Pero those are the three most important things, no, plus the smart. Para pag pinagsama mo siya kasi that will, will provide a holistic view 
of it. So far, meron kayong, meron kayong questions sa, ano, sa planning? Meron kayong questions sa planning? Meron kayong questions sa planning, guys, or wala? Wala po si. Wala. Okay. Ano ba akong nakalimutan? Tingin ko may nakalimutan na ako. Yan. Now, kung clear yan, kung clear na yan, no, meron na yung tinatawag na different variations or formats when you actually make a plan of care. Okay. Ay, sa ano pala to? Okay. So here, when you make a planning, okay, you have to consider that there are two types of nursing care plan. Okay. There are two types of nursing care plan. Okay. NCP. One is your individualized. care plan and the other one is your standardized now what's the difference guys when we talk of your individualized care plan okay it caters no it caters to the needs it caters to the needs of a specific client. No? So, ganun siya. So, ang kinikater niya is yung needs ng specific client. Hindi siya apply to all. Okay? It does not apply to all. Meaning, what the care, the care plan for patient one cannot be or will not be the same for the care plan for patient two. Mag, maaaring magkaiba yan. No? Kaya nga tinawag siya na individualized. So, it's tailored to uh, to cater the needs of a specific client. So, ano naman yung standard care plan? Ang standard care plan naman, guys, no? this one, yung standard care plan, usually, this one is given, or this one is done, pag uh, sa mga institutions wherein there is a standard procedure or a standard plan of care that is given, okay? Given to patient with the same problem, okay? Halimbawa, dali lang ah, maingay alak. This one see. Standardized care plan, okay? Standardized care plan. So halimbawa, if a certain, uh, if the institution has a care plan for all patients with tuberculosis, so automatically, that uh, that plan, okay, for example, TB patient, and if the institution have a care plan for that standardized, then that standardized care plan will apply, okay, sorry, will apply to all patients with tuberculosis. Okay, that is the standardized care plan, okay? But aside from the standardized care plan, meron pa tayong dinatawag na Another type of care plan that we have is the informal. Is the informal care plan. Ano naman tong informal care plan na to? Informal nursing care plan, okay, ito naman yung nag exist lang sa nurse's mind. Okay? Sa nurse's mind lang. Meaning, it is not yet written. No? It is not yet written. It is not transcribed yet. Okay? It is not transcribed yet. So that is informal care plan. But always remember that if you have an informal care plan after, after or before your shift ends, you have to actually document it. Huh? Because if you did not do it, or if you did not, uh, if you do not document it, then meaning it has not been done. Okay. So malino ba tayo sa individualized, standardized, and informal care plan? Okay. So these are the different of plans. Okay. So, what are the guide? Since we are talking about of NCP, there should be a guide when you actually write it. So, the first one is that you should have a date and you should sign the care plan. Okay? So, that is very important. Kailangan mo lagyan ng date. Kailan ba ginawa yung care plan na yan? Para ba yan ngayon? Para ba yan bukas? O nakaraang buwan, na buwan, buwan pa yan? So it should be important that you will actually put a date and then you have to sign it. 
Okay? Then you have to use a category heading. Yan ginagawa nyo naman na to. No? You have to use a category heading. Ginagawa nyo na yan, uh, ginagawa nyo na yan actually. Like nursing diagnosis, goals, desired outcome. Like yung, di ba yung sa table, you may assessment. Tapos we have the diagnosis. Then we have your NCP. Yan. So ginagawa nyo na, this is the category heading already. Okay? Now, aside from that, you have to... Ay, naputol na. Okay. So, what are the other guidelines? Parang hindi pantay-pantay itong akin. Ayan. Use its standardized and approved medical or English symbol. Okay. So, you have to use a standard medical or English symbol. Then, be specific. Ganun din sa mga sinabi ko kanina. No? Ensure that the plans contain an ongoing assessment and so on. So, this, uh, this one, <coughs> just refer to your module. No? So, these are some of the other uh, guides. May guides dyan. So, sa inyong NCP. No? Na pwede nyong sundin. Okay? Do you have any questions so far? Excuse me. Do you have any questions so far? Matapos na tayo. Malapit na tayong matapos. Okay. Walang tanong. If you don't have any question, okay, the next one is your the fourth phase or the fourth stage. Is your implementing. Implementing or your implementation. So in the implementation or implementing phase, it's uh, the only thing that you have to, uh, to, to consider here, most importantly, is that putting into action. No? Putting into action. Putting into action your plan of care. Okay, so that is under your implementing you have to put into action the plan of care that you have okay now there is a very important thing that you have to do before okay before you actually implement so ito very very important to ha huh? before you do implementation what is the first step that you need to do the first step that you need to do is you have to reassess okay you have to reassess your patient. For example, the doctor's order is to give paracetamol 500 mg every 4 hours PRN. Okay, so guys, ang ibig sabihin ng PRN, it means as needed. Okay, so the doctor's order is to give Paracetamol, 500 milligrams every 4 hours as needed. Okay? So malinaw, naiintindihan yung doctor's order. So ikaw naman, pumunta ka kay client, it's your shift, 7 a.m. Bagong order ni doctor, ikaw ang carry out. Nakita mo sa, ay, nag-order si doctor. Okay? So what do you have to do? When you do your initial round, you have to check for the Temperature. Tama? You have to reassess. Bakit? If the patient is, fe is not febrile, if the patient is not febrile, okay, not febrile, magbibigay ka ba ng paracetamol? Magbibigay ka ba ng paracetamol? Anyone? If the patient is not febrile, walang lagnat si pasyente, magbibigay ka ba ng paracetamol? Nandiyan pa ba kayo? So guys, kung walang lagnat ang pasyente, magbibigay pa ba kayo ng paracetamol? Ang order ni doctor is to give paracetamol 500 milligrams every 4 hours, PRN or as needed? No, sir. Hindi na. Kasi as needed lang siya. Walang 
lagnat. Eh, pag 7 a.m., pag-check mo sa patient, si patient may fever, 39.8 degrees Celsius. Magbibigay ka ba? Yes, sir. Yes. Ngayon, sabi ni doctor, every 4 hours. So, when is the next one? 8, 9, 10, 11. Pagdating ng 11 a.m., magbibigay ka na ba? Magbibigay ka pa uli ng paracetamol? Yes, sir. Kapag nilalagnat pa rin po. Kapag nilalagnat pa rin, very good. So the key here is you have to reassess. Diba? You have to actually check first. You have to check first if the patient is, is still febrile. No, kung may lagnat pa si patient. Kasi kung wala nang lagnat si patient, don't give. If there is fever, you give. Nakukuha? So you still have to reassess your patient. Kasi ang order is every four hours as needed. E paano pag order ni client to give paracetamol 500 milligrams round the clock? Meaning 24 hours. Round the clock for the first 24 hours. Anong gagawin natin? Are we going to give the medication whether there is fever or not? Okay. Ito ang order haga to give paracetamol. IV na lang. Ay, to give paracetamol 300 mg IV round the clock for the first 24 hours. Okay? Then, every 4 hours PRN. Halimbawa, ganyan ang order ni doktor. Sabi ni doktor, magbigay ka ng paracetamol 300 mg IV by intravenous round the clock for the first 24 hours. No? Q4. Q4 hours round the clock. No? For the first 24 hours. Then Q4 PRN. So guys, magbibigay ka ba if the patient has no fever? And if the patient has fever for the first 24 hours? Hmm? Answer. So, guys, magbibigay ka ba ng medication, ng paracetamol, kahit si patient is walang fever for the first 24 hours round the clock? Hello, 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 how do you do? Oh, may kausap pa ba ako, guys? Nandyan pa ba kayo? Sir, yes po. Okay, so magbibigay pa rin tayo? Magbibigay pa rin tayo? No, no. Ah, okay, guys. Kaya dito, we need to understand the order, di ba? Uh, given though nasa first year pa lang kayo dito, pero tingnan nyo to, no? This one, kaya ko lang siya binibigay na example is for your reassessment, no? Kasi you are implementing. So dito, kailangan mo pa rin first is you have to reassess. Tingnan mo si patient kung meron siyang fever or not. Okay, first thing. Kasi you have to document. Ngayon, walang fever si patient pero ang order ni doctor every 4 hours round the clock for the first 24 hours. So meaning, whether there is fever or not, magbibigay ka. Okay? You just have to document it. Then if there is fever, i-document mo pa rin, magbibigay ka rin for the first 24 hours. Kasi yun yung order ni doctor, round the clock. Okay? Naiintindihan nyo siya? So it's different doon sa PRN as needed that it's different dito sa order na may round the clock option. Malinaw, guys? Yes, Malinaw? Sir. Okay, ha? always remember that. Ha? So that's why it is also very important for us to understand the orders that will be given by the 
physician. Okay? It is very important that we understand that. Okay? So, yeah. So, that is the importance of reassessment. That is just one example. Pero there are so many things that when you actually deliver your nursing care, you have to check first if the client still needs the nursing care that you are going to provide. Or mamaya, nag-worsen yung condition ni client, pag binigyan mo, na, pag binigyan mo siya nito, mas makakost pa ng, mas, ng hindi mas maganda sa pasyente natin. Okay? Now, the next thing is you have to determine. Okay? You have to determine the nurses need for assistance, okay? What do you mean determine the nurses needs for assistance, di ba? Okay, our last, uh, one of our last topic last semester in your laboratory is your uh, dangling, transferring, and ambulation, tama? Tama? Naalala pa? Okay, now, when you actually carry out your nursing care plan, you have to know whether you need assistance or not. So, sino dito ang nursing kasi gusto pumunta ng US? Meron ba? Sino dito ang nursing kasi gusto kumita ng dollars? Wala? Meron ba? Ayun, nag-raise ang hand si Ms. Cariaga. Or ako po. Si Mr. Cabigas, di ba? Okay, there is nothing wrong with that. Kasi that is true, di ba? Pag ikaw, nag-take ka ng NCLEX, umatan ka ng mga review, tatanungin ka, ba't ka nag-take ng NCLEX? Sasabihin mo, is to ano, to take care of humanity. What? No, hindi totoo yan. That is part of your role as a nurse, but basically your main goal is to actually earn a living, right? That's why that's the profession that you get when you're doing when you're caring for your patients you are actually earning and maganda ngayon di ba magkano na ang magkano na ang per hour sa US 40 to 60 dollars mas tumaas pa nga yata because of covid ngayon kaya nga may mga nurses kumikita sila ng 300 to 500,000 ito yung mga entry level 300 to 500,000 per month di ba pesos di ba so ngayon if, kasi nang gusto bumunta ng UK, meron bang gusto bumunta ng UK? May gusto bumunta ng UK? Oh, sige. So, halimbawa, Miss Cariaga, ayan, oh, si Miss Casilejo, nag-raise ng hand. Miss Cariaga, ano yung height mo, ma'am? Anong height mo? Five plus. <laughs> oh, yan. Very good. So, si Miss Cariaga, gusto niya bumunta ng... US. So, ang height niya is 5 flat. ba? 5 feet tall. Ngayon, pumasok siya sa isang hospital. Of course, di ba, alam naman natin that Americans, they are majority, not majority, they have, uh, they are like big sizes. ba? Halimbawa, ang pasyente mo is 6 inches, uh, 6 feet 3 inches. no? 6 feet 3 inches tall. Obese. True. <laughs> <laughs> diba? Ubis. O. Oh. Diba? Ikaw five feet. Ngayon, si pasyente, ikaw ang naka-assign kay patient, kay Mr. A. Diba? Kailangan mo siyang i-ambulate. Sabi ay, hindi, kaya ko to. Diba? Pinipino ako, Pinoy ako, super nurse ako, Lagay kaya ko to. Na. <laughs> Diba? So, ang ginawa niya, pumunta siya kay pasyente alone. Sir, good morning! I'm going to assist you with ambulation. Okay? Diba? Ang unang gagawin natin before you ambulate, if the patient is lying down on the bed, you actually have to dangle. Position your patient in a sitting position and let the feet dangle for a few minutes to, uh, to avoid ortho Static hypotension, di ba? O ngayon, ito na si Ms. Cariaga. Okay, sir. Di ba? Baka mas mataas pa sa kanya yung bed at saka yung patient. Pag ano, kasi five feet siya, eh, may taas pa yung bed. Tapos siguro mga nasa... Oh. Niya. Sir, 
I will assist you ha. We have to sit. So ang ginawa niya, ipinosisyon niya muna yung paa doon sa may side ng bed. Diba? Nakalabas na. O sir, in a count of three. One, two, three. Oh, sir, sir, ako na magiging pasyente. Diba? Isa pa. One, two, three. Ikaw na ang nasubsob. Diba? O. Oh. Hindi wala. Sabi ng patient, okay, okay, okay. I, I can do it. I can do it. Okay. So, si pasyente umupo. Pag upo ngayon ni pasyente, okay, sir, I will assess. I, uh, just sit there for a few minutes then I will assist you to ambulate. So, tatayo tayo, sir. O, oh, dilagay mo na yung, yung belt. Yung, yung belt. Yung ambulation belt. Di ba? Position ka sa likod ni client. Okay, sir. Pag bilang ko ng tatlo, Stand up, ha? One, two, three. Okay, nakatayo naman si pasyente. Walang orthostatic hypotension. Eh, ito na, mag-move na siya. Diba, nandun ka sa likod ni pasyente? Nasa likod ka ni pasyente. Bigla si pasyente na nahilo. Pangalawang step pa lang, nahilo, hindi mo maibalik sa bed. Anong nangyari? No, si pasyente, ay, ibang pala yung drawing ako. Ito si pasyente, ito si Miss Cariaga, di ba? Nadapa. Ching, pareho kayong nadapa ngayon. Di ba? So, did it uh, did it benefit your client, Miss Cariaga? Di ba? Hindi. No, sir. Hindi siya nag-benefit. So, here, you actually have to determine whether you need another person to assist you. Ngayon, kung nakita ni Miss Cariaga, medyo malaki yung pasyente ko, hindi ko kakayanin, then you can ask another person to assist you. Now, sino yung mga pasyente, sino yung mga tao na pwedeng mag-assist sa iyo? Now, if you are going to work in the US, alam mo ba the role of registered nurses in the U.S. is managerial. It's managerial in nature. Bakit? You have your UAP. Ano yung UAP? Unlicensed Assistive Personnel. Dito sa Pilipinas, yun yung mga tinatawag nating NA, Nursing Assistant or Nursing Attendant. Okay? Then you have your LPN and you have your LDN. Your LPN is your licensed practitioner Uh, nurse, licensed practitioner nurse and your licensed vocational nurse. Okay? These are not RN yet. No? Parang ito yung mga, nung time ito yung mga ASHE, yung Associate in Health Science Education namin. Yung mga time. I'm not sure kung nagbibigay pa ng ASHE ngayon eh. Now, what is the function of your UAP? Your UAP can actually get the vital signs, can, ch can change the bedding, no? can change the bedding. Maraming functions na pwedeng gawin ang UAP mo. No? So, pwede rin silang mag-feed sa patient. So, basically, sila yung most of the dirty works. Pwede nilang gawin yan. Anong ginagawa ng LPN mo? Yung LPN mo naman, they can do medications. Okay? They can do medications except for IV. Wala, hindi sila pwede mag-IV. Okay? They can do the monitoring on your behalf. They can do the monitoring. No? Marami pa. Marami mga procedures na pwede gawin ng LPN. Then, of course, your RN. Your RN, ang main function mo is, uh, basically, it is a must that you do admission admission assessment. Okay? Admission assessment, IV medication, uh, as, as IV medication, blood transfusion, kasi hindi mo pwedeng, ano yan, hindi mo pwedeng i-assign sa iba yan, so blood transfusion. Your blood transfusion, first 15 minutes, kailangan mo lagi yung i-monitor, di ba? First 15 minutes, i-monitor mo yan. Kasi for eh, talagang bedside ka niyan because to, to see any adverse reaction. Ngayon, pag wala na, after 15 minutes, you can assign it already to the LPN or LBN. Di ba? So, kaya ang role ng isang registered nurse when you go in the UA, US is mani parang managerial ka lang kasi you have your NA or UAP, you have your LPN or LBN who is there to assist you. Di ba? So, ikaw, documentation, yan, nandiyan, documentation, Basically, NCP, nursing care plan, ikaw ang gagawa niyan. Gagawa ka ng nursing, plan, ng nursing care plan, later on you will have to delegate. Okay? So, balik tayo doon. So, ngayon, ikaw, i-ambulate mo si, si patient, Ms. Cariaga, no? So, nakita mo medyo malaki si patient. Pwede mo ngayon i-ASTI UAP at saka si LPN, LBN to assist you. Okay? Pag wala si UAP, pag wala si LPN, LBN, you can also ask, no? another nurse to assist you. Okay? You can ask another nurse to assist you. Meaning, no, kailangan mo ng tulong. This is, ano, hindi, hindi siya, wag mo siyang ihikakahiya kasi bakit? This is necessary in able 
for you to deliver your uh, responsibility properly. Okay, so you should know when to ask for help. That's why when you do the implementation, the first one is you have to reassess. The second one is you have to determine the need for assistance. Nakukuha ba? Nakukuha? Naiintindihan? Yes, sir. Now, yes. the third one is you implement, no? Implement nursing intervention. Now, this one, ito na yung uh, pag-deliver mo ng nursing care na nandun sa plan mo. Okay? So, kung na-assess mo na na kailangan mong bigyan, kung na-assess mo na kailangan mo ng help, then you ask for help and then you deliver the nursing intervention. Okay? So, kagaya kanina, ang pasyente ni Ms. Cariaga, 6 feet, uh, 3 inches tall, siya 5 feet, nakahingi siya ng tulong sa UAP na 4, uh, 4 feet, di ba? At least, dalawa sila. <laughs> at least, dalawa sila. Isang 4 feet at saka isang 5 feet. Di ba? So, if you need further assistance, then you can ask for another person. But usually, hindi naman ganun kaliliit yung mga tao na 4 feet umaabot doon, no? Uh, in rare cases. Dito sa Pilipinas, kasi hindi naman tayo ganun ka, ano, meron talaga mga ganun cases. But basically, pag ganyan, uh, it's better na ang, ang, ang humingi assistance from a male, no? Uh, UAP, LPN, LVN, or a nurse practitioner. Okay? Now, so you have to implement the nursing intervention. This one is your action. This one is you are carrying out the task already. Okay. Then the number four is supervising and delegating care. Okay. Kaya kung makikita mo, actually this goes hand in hand. Kasi di ba kanina in-explain ko yung UAP, yung LPN, LVN, no? Kasi when you implement, no, there are uh, nursing actions that you can actually delegate directly and then you can also supervise. For example, your plan of care is to provide tepid sponge bath. Okay, if you are in the US, you can actually assign or delegate that either to the LPN or LVN. Diba? Pwede mong assign sa LPN or LVN. Okay, now if you know that you have to monitor the vital signs every two hours, then you can already delegate that to the UAP. Diba? So, ganun siya. So, this one goes hand in hand. When you are implementing the, uh, the nursing intervention, you have to know whether you can delegate and whether you need to supervise the delivery of that nursing care. Check. And then, most importantly, you have to document, okay? You have to document nursing activities, okay? Bakit mo kailang i-document ang nursing activities? Again, what is not written is not done. So kahit anong sabihin mo, pag hindi yan nakasulat, pag wala yung signature mo, pag wala yung date mo, ibig sabihin, hindi yan nagawa. Pag may nangyari sa pasyente mo, it can be your fault. Okay? So dapat malinaw yan. So, doon sa mga nagbabalak pumunta sa US, sa UK, very good timing. Tapusin nyo agad ang inyong, uh, ang inyong nursing course kasi right now, nurses are very in demand. No? Very, are very in demand. Okay? Kasi wala, kulang ng supply ng nurses ngayon. Okay? Nurses are very in demand. Even if you are aware with our political system, the Philippines actually banned outgoing nurses. No, yung mga nurses na magkatrabaho abroad, di ba? So yan they banned it. Kasi nga kulang tayo ng supply. Okay. So very important if you want to be a registered nurse soon and you want to go abroad, and then you just have to take the initiative to learn muna, okay? To learn muna. That is very important, okay? Learn muna ngayon, konting tiis, konting hirap, and then tsaka na lang kayo magpakasasa, okay? Imagine if you are earning... 300 to 500,000 pesos per month. Anong gagawin mo? Hmm? 
Ilan yan? 6 million pesos in a year. Anong gagawin mo? Okay? So, wag mo nang gawin, wag bumili ng jowa, ah. Wag bumili ng jowa. Mga bata pa kayo. So, dapat problemahin nyo ang jowa nyo pag mga 35 years old and above na kayo, wala pa kayong boyfriend, wala pa kayong girlfriend, wala pa kayong asawa, then mamroblema na kayo niyan. Yan. Pwede na kayong bumili ng jowa kasi marami na kayong pera niyan. Pero pag na yun, okay, you, you build your lot, you have your house, no, your family, asikasuhin mo muna yan, your car and everything. Di ba? Ang sarap isipin, no? this is a very, very big figure. Ngayon yan, eh, maaari pa yung lumaki in the future. Okay? So I'm not encouraging you, but if that is your plan, go ahead. Okay? Make sure that you take time to learn kasi uh, when you go there, okay, uh, practice here in the Philippines is definitely different in practice when it comes to US and America. Kaya nga yung mga libro ang pinanggagaw, pinanggagalingan natin is galing sa US and America or based sa American Nurses Association, no? dun sa mga well-established nursing associations kasi definitely they are actually doing it. But then, in the Philippines, when you go onto your uh, clinical settings, maaaring makita nyo maraming deviation. Okay, bakit? Because hindi ganun kadami ang resources natin. So you have to understand that. So that's why at this stage where you are learning, you have to actually grasp all the uh, learnings that you can get enable for you to actually develop a knowledge that will provide confidence when you go uh, when you go out there already. Okay, Malinao, Malinao, Malinao. So here there are three types of skills that you need to do when you are implementing. What are the three types of skills that you need to to have? Okay, number one, you have to have your cognitive skills. So ano ibig sabihin ng cognitive skills? Simple, no? You have a problem solving, decision making, critical thinking, clinical reasoning and creativity. Okay? You have a uh, problem solving capability or problem solving skills. You have decision making skills. You have critical thinking, you have criti clinical reasoning, okay? And you have your creativity. Diba? Tayo mga nurses, talaga very creative tayo. Kung wala yung kailangan mong gamitin, mahahanap natin yan in our environment. Okay? Number two, you have to have interpersonal skills. Ano yung interpersonal skills? This one includes your verbal and nonverbal communication. Nonverbal? Again, this includes your Verbal and nonverbal communication. Okay. And then you have your technical skills. Now, and in technical skills. Your technical skills, these are your hand-on skills. Okay. Technical skills, these are your hands-on skills of the procedures that needs to be done, nursing procedures, psychomotor procedures, or whatever that is needed, enable for you to carry out your task as a nurse. So these are your technical skills. So always remember, it is not, it is not enough that you have one. You should have all, okay? So you have to have the attitude, you have to have the knowledge, and you have to have the skills, okay? Ngayon, it's ask na. Dati KS at KSA yan, knowledge, uh, skills, and attitude. Ngayon, it's ask na. Okay? But ask. Always na una na ngayon ang attitude. No? Attitude, your skills, and your knowledge. Yan. Okay? So always na una na ngayon yung attitude natin. Okay? That is very important in the delivery of our nursing care. Okay? So maliwanag. After implementing, then we have the last phase which is the so-called evaluating phase. Now, guys, when we go to the evaluating phase, this one, what we do is, no? diagram. First, that you have to do is collect data again. Now, anong data ang kinokollect nyo? You collect data related to the outcomes. Related to the outcomes. Outcomes ng ano, sir? Outcomes ng inyong plan or desired goal or desired outcome. Diba? 
So you first thing is you have to collect data related to the, the outcomes of your desired outcomes, okay? Now, the next step that you have to do is to compare. To compare. Compare data with outcomes. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? So, nimbawa, ang initial data mo is 40 degrees Celsius. Ang goal mo is ma-reach niya, okay? Ang goal mo is ma-reach niya ang 36.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, ang goal mo is ma-reach niya ang 36.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is your initial data. This is your goal. What is your actual data? No? So, for example, you get 36.7 degrees Celsius. So, you have to compare the actual data with your initial data and your goal. So, is it met, unmet, or partially met? In this situation, your initial data is 40 degrees Celsius. You, need, you wanted to get 36.8 degrees Celsius. And the actual is 36.7, so meaning it is actually met. Diba? So that is why you have to compare. Why? Because after comparing, <clears throat> you also have to relate. Yan, guys. You have to relate <clears throat> nursing action. You have to relate nursing action to client goals and outcomes okay so you have to relate nursing action to client goals or out outcomes what do you mean by that yun bang nursing action mo yung implementation mo is that the factor na nakatulong para ma-resolve yung patient problem mo for example your goal is to decrease 36.8 degrees celsius e ang ginawa mo tsb medication okay Proper clothing, proper clothing, turning, positioning. Ginawa mo lahat yan, for example. So, after comparing the data, nakita mo, bumaba, nag-normalize. Very good. So, ngayon in-relate mo, is this nursing interventions, ito bang mga ginawa kong to, led to the achievement of my goal? No? Does, did, it lead, did it lead to the achievement of my goals? Because if it does, then that is actually a positive one. So you have to relate. Kasi kung hindi naman pala yun na nakapagbaba ng temperature, edi walang say sa yung ginawa mong nursing intervention. Di ba? So after you relate, you have to draw now your conclusions. Now, what are your conclusions about the problem? Ha? These are conclusions about the problem. So what are your conclusions? So dito, papasok tayo dun sa tatlo. Whether it's met, whether it's partially met, or whether it's unmet. So this is your conclusion, guys. Okay? So this is your conclusion. So once you have derived to a conclusion, your final step in the evaluation is to decide whether you would like to continue whether you would like to modify or whether you would like to terminate. Yeah, to terminate the care plan. Okay? So that is very important. So hindi ka lang basta-basta magkukontinue, hindi ka lang basta-basta magterminate or magbomodify. You actually have to relate no? the nursing action with the actual data and then you have to, do, to draw your conclusion so that you can decide whether you would like to continue, modify, or terminate the care plan. Okay? Malinaw ba yan, guys? Malinaw? Naiintindihan? Naiintindihan? Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Wala. Okay? So basically, that, okay. So basically that is the nursing process. Naiintindihan ba? Naliwanagan ba? Yes, po, sir. Okay. Yes, poster. Now, ang next topic natin is health assessment. Now, it is also important kasi nga doon sa mga subjective data, di ba? So, nandito yung mga biographic data nyo, ganyan. Yan, nandyan yung name, nandyan yung age, nandyan yung sex, nandyan yung birthday. No, nandyan lahat ng biographic data makikita mo dyan. Okay? Now, the, the, the thing here is, the thing here is, ito yung NCP nyo. Diba? Ito yung NCP nyo. Ay, ano ba yan? Hindi straight ang aking sulat. Yan. 
Ito yung NCP nyo. In your NCP, nandito yung assessment. ba? Diba? Under your assessment, nandiyan yung objective, nandiyan yung subjective data. ba? Diba? Now, nandito yung inyong diagnosis. Okay? Nandito yung inyong P, E, S format. Now, nandito yung inyong uh, planning. Okay? Nandito yung inyong planning. So, yung planning nyo, okay, dito mo ilalagay yan. Nandito yung should be smart. Okay? Then, ilalagay mo dito yung nursing intervention. Hinihiwalay nyo pa ba? Or sa planning na pasok? Inihiwalay nyo pa ba or sa planning na pasok? Ah, tama, nursing interventions, no? Ito kasi yung desired outcome nyo. Desired outcome. So this is your nursing intervention, then there is your rationale. And then this is your evaluation. Okay? So it should be smart, then this is your actions, no? This is your actions. Then this is your rationale reason for doing so. And then this is your evaluation. Okay? Whether it's met, unmet, or partially met. Okay? So this is your this is your nursing care plan. So ngayon, meron pa ba kayong tanong sa paggawa ng nursing care plan nyo? Naintindihan ba kung paano ginagawa ang nursing care plan? May tanong? May tanong? May tanong kayo, guys? Wala? So, naintindihan? Sigurado kayo naintindihan nyo? May kausap pa ba ako? Okay, so um, if naintindihan naman yung lahat, walang tanong. Guys, earlier I have a, uh, someone asked me, ano, yung daw rationale, there was an information that they get that the rationale should be copied and paste. Alam nyo ba to? Uh, alam nyo ba tong information na to? Anyone? Okay, now guys, I don't have a problem with that, pero kasi para sa akin, your rationale should not be copied and paste. Bakit? It is true that meron tayong tinatawag the nursing care plan handbook. May, may handbook kung saan makikita mo on whatever nursing care you can render it for specific cases. No? Sometimes you can also copy rationale. But guys, for me, I don't... Uh, I don't uh, suggest or I don't recommend that you copy your rationale. Bakit? Kasi ganito yan, no? simple lang yun, guys. Nag-assess ka. Naintindihan mo yung objective at saka yung subjective data. Tama? Naintindihan mo yung objective, naintindihan mo yung subjective data, nagawa mo siya complete, nagawa mo siya accurate, no? nagawa mo siya factual, nagawa mo siya reliable. Nagawa mo siya reliable. Now, after you get the, the, the objective and subjective data, na ito naman mas matutunan nyo pa sa inyong health assessment course, no? sa inyong health assessment course, itong short term natin, you will have to form your nursing diagnosis. Now, yung nursing diagnosis natin, mas madali kasi nandiyan naman na yung nanda guide nyo. Di ba? Nandiyan na yung nanda guide nyo. Ngayon, once na create yung diagnosis nyo, you will have to plan for the intervention, yung desired outcomes nyo. Now, kayo na yung gagawa ng desired outcomes nyo. You don't need to copy the desired outcomes. Bakit mo pakakapihin? Kung naintindihan mo yung objective, kung naintindihan mo yung subjective data, kung naintindihan mo yung iyong problem, etiology, signs, and symptoms, may yung desired outcome mo, mas magiging malinaw din yan sa'yo. Diba? Kailangan mo bang kapihin? No need. All you have to do is to follow the subject, the verb, and the uh, conditions. Then you have to make it smart. Oh, 
Now, very simple. Hindi mo na siya kailangan kopyahin. You can create your own desired outcomes. No? But just have to consider it should be smart. Now, if you actually understand kung ano yung achievement, kung ano yung gusto mong ma-achieve at the end of your shift, magkikreate na ngayon ng mga nursing activities. Ito yung action mo. Ngayon, guys, tanungin ko kayo. Tepid sponge bath for patient with fever. What is the rationale? Anyone? What is the rationale why we give tepid sponge bath for patients with fever? Mr. Vilo, are you still here? Sir, it by evaporation for bath. Huh? Heat by evaporation po. Heat by evaporation, okay? To release the heat, di ba? So, it actually promotes no, the decrease of temperature by absorbing the heat of the body, di ba? O pwede mong ilagay ng ganun. I-ano mo lang siya, ipoformulate mo pa lang siya ng maayos, no? You give tepid sponge bath to decrease the temperature of the body by absorbing the Body heat or by evaporation. Oh, now, kailangan ko bang i-copy yun? Kailangan mo bang i-copy yun? Ms. Guillermo? Or kaya mo nang isulat siya kahit hindi ka tumitingin sa saan mang libro? Kaya nang isulat, sir. Oh, di ba? So you don't need to copy. Now, another thing. Oh, sabi, position patient on a semi fowlers oh then what is your rationale for this what is your rationale if you position the the, the patient on a semi fowlers position so that the client will be comfortable in any procedure that you will perform for sir mm -hmm. okay comfort but aside from that when do you usually <coughs> When do you usually position client on semi fowlers or high fowlers position? Aside from comfort. Sir, para para sa breathing, sir. Para mas mag-expand yung lungs ng patient. Exactly, no? So tama rin yung yung sagot mo kanina, sir, ah. Depende lang sa case, no? Depende lang sa iyong problem kasi dito lalagyan mo yan ng ano eh, NCP4, di ba? So kung NCP natin is halimbawa kanyan, so basically, you position the client in semi-fowlers or high-fowlers position to promote lung expansion and increase oxygen delivery in the body. Okay. Ito ba kailangan pa natin i-copy sa book? Kailangan pa ba natin i-copy sa book? No na po, sir. Hindi na. Bakit hindi mo na kailangan i-copy sa book? Kasi alam mo na yung reason behind that. You know why you have to do that. You know the purpose of doing that procedure. So that is why I do not tolerate copying your rationale. Kasi imagine, pag pumunta ka na sa US, daladala -dala mo pa yung libro, hahanapin mo pa kung saan mo ikokopya yun. Diba? It's not necessary for you to copy. Actually, here, we should not copy because we should be promoting critical thinking and clinical reasoning. So there is no option for us to copy because what is, uh, 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 since we are promoting individualized nursing care, what is given to one may not be applicable to the other. Nakukuha nyo, guys? Nakukuha nyo? So, as early as now, you practice providing your rationale in a way on how you understood it or how you understand it. No? Kung ang problema nyo yung grammar, yung sentence construction, mas okay na yun. No? Kasi pwede mo pang i-improve yun. Pero ang problema mo, kung ang problema mo, kinopya mo lang ng kinopya na hindi mo naiintindihan kung ano yung inilalagay mo, that is a big problem. Later on, it will give you a very bad result. Okay? Naiintindihan ba? Naiintindihan ba? Naiintindihan? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, before I let you go, is there any question? May tanong pa kayo? 
May tanong pa kayo? Question. May tanong pa? Sige lang, shoot. I-ask yun na yung question sabang nandito pa tayo. Sir, personal concern po. Ano yon? Yung NCP ko po, sir. Kagabi. Ah, ay, sino ka ba si Miss Ano? Sino yun? Gilear mo po. Hindi pa ba ako nag-reply? Hindi pa po, sir. Pero... Iko-consider nyo pa rin po ba, sir? Nag inattach ko naman po siya sa Gmail nyo, sir. Tapos, um, one minute lang po ata. You just Saan? submit it. Oo, you just submit it. Uh, Dadagay mo naman doon yung explanation mo, di ba? Parang nakita ko nga yung message yes, sir. sa email. Oo. Nag-explain naman. Yes, yes. Meron pang isa. Thank you, sir. Si Miss, ano, si Miss, meron pang isa, si Miss Charmaine Arellano. No, nag-message din. Sabi ko, just send it over. No, aside from that, is there any other question? May tanong pa, guys? Meron pa? Wala na. Wala na? Okay. So, set 4. May mga set 4 na ba dito? May bumalik bang set 4? Sir, present po. Sir, okay. present po. Okay, so paki-type na lang set 4 dun sa mga set 4 at saka kung yung iba kung anong set meron kayo, kindly type it. No, para at least alam ko na nandito pa rin kayo. Niyan, para alam ko kung anong set kayo since this is recorded naman so mapo-pull out ko siya. So set 4 confirm ko lang schedule natin is 7:30 to 12. Tama ba? 12 noon, Friday and Saturday. Tama ba? Set 4? Set 4, 4, set 4, 4, set 4. 7.30 to 12 ba schedule nyo for HA? Friday, Saturday? No. May set 4 pa ba? May set 4 pa? Miss Apostol, 7.30 to 12 ba ang schedule nyo? Yes, sir. Okay, so this one ha, every uh, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, usually mag-start tayo ng 8 a.m. ha, Start tayo ng 8 a.m. So I will announce uh, kung ano, kung Friday or Saturday or Friday and Saturday, depending on the need, depending on the need dun sa ating subject, okay? Now for set 1 and set 2, na nandito, set 1 and set 2, uh, Intay lang kayo ng schedule from your ano from your uh, from the clinical instructor na ma-assign sa inyo. But ano yung schedule nyo? 6 to 7:30 then 7:30 to 10:30. Yung 6 to 7:30 is gabi. Set 1 and set 2. 6 to 7:30 ba yun ng hapon? 5:30 to 7:30 po ata sir. Nang hapon. Okay, ang sige. Kasi medyo nagugulan ako sa sked nila. But then, okay. So if you don't have any questions, thank you for attending my class today. Okay. Um, thank you for taking time. And I hope that I was able to, to share knowledge with you. Okay. So keep safe and healthy, everyone. Keep safe and healthy. And you have a great day ahead of you. Okay. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you so much. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, po. Thank you, po. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Ay, sandali. Picture pala, kailangan pala yan. Picture pala, kailangan. Ay, ba't ganun? Hindi lumalaki yung screen ko. Ay, ay. Ba't ganun? Nali ilang, ah. Ba't hindi lumalaki yung screen ng ano? Kailangan ko bang manually increase? Nawala kasi yung aking isang headings. 
Oh, yan. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.